gonna be a Barbie wall. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty seconds remaining. Like you want me to say, I dabble stand up to something. I have any disrespect for you at all. I was very confused by the title "Everything Everywhere All at Once" because that's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Ooh, what's up, boys and girls? Welcome to another episode. Oh, my balls are jiggling. Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Rockfin, Rumble, all the places where fine podcasts are sold. Guys, I can't believe it's almost the end of the year. But if you live in the New York City area, you are in luck because you can see me do stand up a couple more times before the end of the year. Uh, on the 28th of December, I will be uh, doing the 8 and 10 o'clock shows at the Grizzly Pair. And uh, they have a new location in Midtown. Very cool looking. Ooh. Wow. Christmassy music. Look at that. Thanks, Filing Cabinet. <laughs> wow. This sounds like. This is like the kind of music where you're like, you play before you jump off a roof. Uh, it's like some holiday music is very depressing, uh, but I like it. I like the gentle, min the gentle uh, musings, <laughs> minstrelings. Gentle? This is a gentle, gentle, gentle not dental. D this is a gentle holiday song. Anyway, if you don't want a gentle time, come see me at Gino Bisconti's birthday show december 29th at stand up new york then we got dabble con friday <laughs> friday february 3rd saturday uh february 4th we're in rochester new york comedians of the Dabbleverse live podcast tapings a meet and greet and the dabby awards uh all at comedy at the carlson oh rochester new york in february yes it's, it's gonna be a lot of snow it's gonna be a gay time or if you like hot weather, come see me in California Friday, February 24th or Saturday, February 25th at the Mic Drop Comedy Club in San Diego. For tickets, go to chrissymayer.com. And if you want to see me perform where you live, tag me on Twitter. Tag the venue you like on Twitter. Just go nuts. I know I'll, some of you are not social media people, but these venues do notice that sort of thing. So tag away, peoples. Uh, you know what else gets me into the holiday spirit? A little CBD. <laughs> the holidays are here, which means, ooh, maybe you're going to see some uh, family members you don't particularly care for. Maybe you went broke buying Christmas presents. Maybe you went above budget and you're like, fuck, now I have nothing left for me. Maybe you want to sneak out um, on a balcony or on a back porch and have some dad time or some mom time. Uh, that's where Cushy Dreams comes in. They are number one for smokable CBD flower and Delta 8. Their stuff helps sleep, relaxation, feeling good, and more. I am a big fan of their pre-rolls, which come in all sorts of different blends. They come individually packaged uh, in different blends like Hustle, Create, Relax, dream peace energy and these jazzy um delta eight it's like super it's like super relaxy like if the if that's not enough and you got to step it up you do delta nine yes okay but they don't just do pre-rolls they have gummies not just any old gummies but gummies that light up your brain like a christmas tree Ooh, yeah oh wow thanks for changing the screen thanks brian cabinet Delta 9 THC gummies. Each gummy contains 10 milligrams of THC and they come in four euphoric flavors. Strawberry, sour watermelon, green apple, and tangerine. Just pop one of these bad boys in, take a bath, go for a walk. Get away from your dad who maybe just came out to you as gay this year and you still maybe don't know how to handle that. 
uh, Cushy Dreams. Go to cushydreams.com. K-U-S-H-Y dreams.com at checkout. Use promo code CMP for 20% off your next order. Good for your first order, second order, etc. Get your gummies with promo code CMP and get 20% off today. Cushydreams.com. Have a Merry Christmas. But, you know, to, to get something for yourself. And sometimes it's it's a drug adjacent pair. It's not. It's legal. It ships to you. It ships legally to you, all 50 states. Okay. Stick to the script, Chrissy. It's always better when you stick to the script. Okay. Uh, I'm so excited to have this guy back on the show. It has been a long ass time since I've had him on the show. He was last on here April 2021. My God, so much has changed. Uh, he's just an absolute YouTube giant. He is the host of Friday Night Tights. You can see us every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern on his YouTube channel, Nerdrotic. Uh, welcome, Gary Peekler of Nerdrotic. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me on. We oh just got gosh. some breaking news, by the way. You want to break I some news? Yes, let's break, break it. Some news, um, Mrs. Nerdrotic. It's bad. It's Uh-oh. Henry did my Cowell. nudes did my nudes come out of the cloud? Uh, yes. There's a Chrissy Mayer fappening going on right now. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> but we know Jennifer Lawrence invented uh the internet and the fappening. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Henry I Cowell, still have her nudes saved on my phone. Really? I had to crop no, one. No. That's, the, that's actually the first time I saw it. Uh, when I was doing a tweet. No, I didn't search out the fappening. I didn't because I'm old. Uh, but Henry Cavill just posted on Instagram that he's not playing Superman. No freaking way. Yep. <gasps> bad, 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 no. bad news. Why? Bad. Why is this happening, Gary? Everyone loves him. He's beautiful to look at. Women love him. Men love him. The gays love him. Yeah. The straights love him. This is not okay. Let's go to his Instagram. And this is something you had been talking about or worried about. Is it because he's a white man? Uh, probably. Uh, okay. I don't know. I, I, I yes, I, I think it's, it's, uh, uh, oh my God. I just had a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran and it's sad news. Everyone. I will, after all, not be returning as Superman after being told by the studio to announce my return back in October prior to their hire. This news isn't the easiest, but that's life. The changing oh. of the guard is something that happens. I respect that. James and Peter have a universe to build. I wish them all involved, uh, the new universe, the best of luck and the happiest of fortunes for those who have been uh, by my side through the years. We can mourn for a bit, and then we must remember Superman is still around. Everything he stands for still exists, and the examples he sets for us are still there. May uh, turn to where the cape, uh, my turn to where the cape has passed, but what Superman stands for never will. It's been fun ride with you all, onwards and upwards. Oh, this is... Ugh. This, this is, is the too bad. I, I want to yeah. see how he really feels. This is a very PR appropriate post here. He's a classy dude. Too classy. Classier than they deserve. I can't imagine he is happy after after uh being told by the studio he could come back. And what are they gonna go? Uh, I I just I just envision like Timothy Chalamet as Superman or some uh. little waif. Uh, I, I can't imagine them finding somebody better than him. Did he do something wrong, Henry Cavill? Or is it literally just like he embodies a, a strong white male? He's, he represents the patriarchy. He's just too good. Look like what did he actually do anything wrong? No, he didn't do anything wrong. And I think that's it. I think he was born way. I, I, if he was if he was a star 10, 15 years ago, he'd be a bigger star. He'd be in everything. Yeah. He'd be James Bond. But uh, Hollywood takes a, it's a, it's a giant corporate ship that has a hard time turning around, and uh, and I like James Gunn as a filmmaker. I don't not not too sure as a person, but as a filmmaker for sure. And uh, you know maybe he's got a better idea. I highly doubt you'll come up with somebody better than Henry Cavill. I could be wrong, but this is the wrong foot. This like this is terrible. 
this is like you have just got on off on the worst foot because Snyder fans are not Snyder fans. They loved Henry Cavill. Like, like you said, everybody loved Henry Cavill. What's mm. not to love? And is it true that he left Witcher for this or he left Witcher for the he idea might, that he would come back? I think he more left. I think they could have done Witcher and Superman at the same time. I think he left Witcher because uh, the, sh uh, the showrunner wasn't respecting the lore. And he left plenty of blood breadcrumbs stating that, uh, that like, hey, I'll stay. If you respect the source material, uh, but I guess maybe, you know, maybe he'll grow tired of being a bait and switch at this point. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. If he were born 10 years earlier, it sucks. It sucks being born in the wrong decade because he's he's a strong guy. He's a great actor. He's again, I'm going to keep talking about how hot he is. It's really upsetting to see this. And like, what is he going to do now? Is he just kind of like, I don't know. I just refuse to believe that that Hollywood is is done uh, giving this guy work. Now he'll uh, if well Marvel's not smart. I'd say they they'd pick him up, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe do something original. Get into an original action franchise, and uh, that might be better off. I don't. I think he'll have plenty of roles coming up. Yeah. So who's going to be? Who do you think they're looking at for the next? Super I, I, I have no, I, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I like, I can't think of a single person that will be as good as Henry Cavill. Uh, maybe I can't think of his name. Not, nah, not, nah, he wouldn't be as good either. He'd be okay. But, uh, the guy who was in, um, umbrella Academy, he was also in, uh, in doctor who the 11th hour. I can't think of his name, but the, the big guy, like he, yeah, but yeah, yeah they're, they, you know, Maybe they are going to go ahead with the Ta-Nehisi Coates, uh, the man who hates America, <clears throat> his version of Superman that Jar Jar Abrams was going, or uh, I don't know, knowing Warner Brothers, Leslie Jones. That would be my pick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. God. All right. So it's been a while since you've been on the show here. A lot has changed. You moved from California to Texas, and you've had yes. time to kind of settle in. What are you? I mean, you've definitely you've traveled around. You've 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 been around the country for sure prior to moving but what are some how was the moving process and what differences are you noticing positive and negative out the gate oh uh it's been all positive in texas like it's a completely different world than california which i just revisited the moving process was a complete nightmare that thankfully i didn't have to participate in too much because my poor wife and my family had to do it while i was doing this youtube thing uh, she was freed. Her time was freed up, if you don't know, because uh, San Francisco locked her business down of 15 years that was having its best year ever and wasn't allowing her to open up. And instead of us, you know, getting a the PP, PPP loans weren't going to cover it instead of us burning through our savings and our kids future. We, you know, she had been working long enough and it was a tough decision, but she decided we decided to like, say, screw it. Um, and we left. I, I didn't want to fund California anymore. I didn't want to give them our tax money. So uh, it's night and day, even going back to LA uh, recently in the last couple of weeks, there's still like half the people I see are wearing masks. Uh, they were talking about yeah. bringing back the mask mandate just a week ago uh, oh, for wow. indoors and Texas. It's a, it's a memory and, and it's bustling here now. Uh, you know, I haven't been here forever, but it is bustling compared to California where you drive. Uh, I lived in San Francisco for 18 years. I grew up in San Diego. A lot of strip malls in California, uh, not stripper malls, strip malls. And <laughs> they're half empty now. They're all half empty. Uh, you know, people are still working from home. They're going to have a huge, huge, um, you know, business real estate glut uh, here, e even here in San Antonio, like uh, USAA is leaving their bu building downtown and, and uh, that's happening all over the place. So it's night and day and, uh, and maybe cause I'm new here, but when I moved here, like we had neighbors bring us food, you oh, know, wow. like, Hey neighbor. And they knocked on our door and we're like, what are you <laughs> like? It was great. It was great. And uh, it's, it's nice to live in America again. Dang. Did they find out uh, that you're an internet person? Uh, a couple have, yeah. Uh, like most don't know. 
Uh, I had to do that like lame thing. We have a, a police officer we can contact. So I had to contact the police officer going, I'm an internet personality and people might call him. It's, it was, I felt so dumb. It do is. It. That's why I didn't do it. That's why I put it, I put it off. I, I literally didn't do it till I was getting swatted and I had, and they had to come down to the basement. Like I got, I got swatted twice in 12 hours. And it's like, you, they come down, you got to go, this is what I'm doing. There's blinking lights in a computer and laundry on either side of me. Like this is my life. Yeah, this is. And there's a dog digging in the carpet for I don't know what. Like this is everything's fine. And then obviously like, oh, okay. dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that. But yeah. Uh, no, live a. It, it's it's pretty anonymous. I go to the store. It's you know, YouTube. There like there are channels with a million subs I've never heard of. So I. You know, honestly, right. it doesn't happen. Thank you, Josh Kelsey, for the 20. Cheers. And as a man, a few words, no words. Um, Yeah, it's crazy. When I had uh, on the first swatting, the detective came down and I had to give him all this information. Like, who in your life do you think wouldn't doesn't like you? I'm like, ah, uh, how much space do you have on this? Page? Well, <laughs> <laughs> but he said that he's like, you know, this has happened before. I've dealt with this like a lot of teenagers are doing this to one another when they lose at video games i was shocked to hear that because i'm like that's like don't fuck around with this stuff guys like there's there's other ways to show that you're pissed at somebody for losing freaking mario kart or whatever yeah win. <laughs> win just get better right but it's good that you told your local person the deal because you Anything to avoid any kind of misunderstandings? Because what if you don't happen to be able to answer the door? Then I think they're in within their right to kind of barge in. Yeah. And I got a kid here, you know, the wife, my dogs. Yeah. So, yeah, but it like I, I haven't really experienced any of that. And uh, it, it's just uh, other than being inside my house for months <laughs> at a time because I'm just like not leaving, <laughs> not leaving, you know. Wow. <laughs> Other than the, yeah, go out to the, you know, grocery store or the gym. That's, that's my life. Do they uh, occasionally take you over to the, to a window, open it and then like waft fresh air into your yeah, face? I touch grass. <laughs> I got and I actually touch like, woo. Yes. Yeah. It's called grounding. You have to, yeah, you're is. supposed to walk around early in the morning, get that sunlight. You're supposed to walk around bare feet to ground yourself. But who's got the yeah. time? I haven't done that enough. Uh, th yeah. Cause I was out, uh. I was out Christmas shopping with the wife and uh, at a crowded mall. That's the Wait, big word. You went to a store, a physical store to I to went to shop? A How mall. retro. It was so retro. And it was, and, and maybe that's, uh, it's good. You know, California loves to think they're ahead of the times on everything, but this mall was like super bougie and nice with Christmas carols. And I didn't know I missed it that much. I was having the best time. I was just, I, I, I didn't even mind my wife, like spending a half an hour in the makeup store. I was just like, Ooh. I'll hang out outside and just kind of look around. And it was yeah. great. I loved it. The so. mall near us is basically turned into a dead mall. Like we only went in to go to like a lens crafters because like like Frank had an eye doctor appointment and and it's kind of fun because the eye doctor remembered me and like I don't know, maybe she's seen a video or two and I was like, oh hi. Oh, <laughs> but like nice. no discount on frames or anything. Everything is still like two hundred dollars, like yeah, before lenses are even involved. Tell me about it. Um, but there's nothing sadder than a dead mall. Like just you could tell they didn't really care very much on putting up decorations. Like there was no music playing. It's so sad. Like there was nothing happier than going to like I'm from Long Island to going to Roosevelt Field, which is like biggest, one of the biggest malls, I think, in the country. Uh, and just like the the excitement, like just people, the bustling. I miss the bustling and the decorations and like the the Santa that go sit on Santa's lap. And then they were like, you're too old, ma'am. And I was like, wow. Whatever. Really like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. No, it, it's, it, it's, that's the, you know, I went to Florida, Orlando, you were there and it was completely different than California. Again, it's bustling. There's a bunch of stuff going on. It's normal. And you can see the difference from those lockdown states to the states that just early on said enough of this nonsense and they had more time to recover. Uh, so Texas, like amidst a pretty crappy economy is doing pretty good. 
Okay. Okay. That's really good. And another thing that's different since you were last on is you slash FNT slash, I guess, geeks and gamers have started going to more conventions and doing more appearances. And like, correct me if I'm wrong, you you're doing a lot more like fan meetups or if you wanted to tell me when you officially started doing those and then when you started doing the conventions and what that's been like for you guys. We did our first one a I, San Diego at Comic Con in 2019. I met Jeremy there. That's where I met Ryan, uh, and we both said, "Hey, you should try this content creation thing. You're pretty good at it." And uh, yeah. So you gave just, Ryan the idea. We yeah yeah like he uh, you know uh, whether that was going on in his head before that or not I you know he had a career in the Navy at the time we couldn't talk about it at the time but uh, and. Yeah, I just thought you know our brief co- it was about a half hour conversation. I'm like, man, you'd be pretty good at this. You should try it. You know, you could just tell if somebody has it or not. Yeah, and uh, he's done all right. But that was our first meetup, <laughs> and uh, we uh, we decided to do one in Vegas during uh, the Star Trek convention, which was close to my birthday. So I'm like, hey, I like Vegas. Let's see if anybody will show up because we had like ten or fifteen people at the San Diego meetup. So I'm like, all right, so. 30 people show up cool right on i know this bar that's really fun it's like a nerd it's like a sports bar except for nerds called the millennium fandom bar in vegas uh, yeah Yeah. and we met there and uh a lot of people showed up we're like holy crap this is great uh had to cancel the next one because of uh covid but uh we did a follow-up and we've done a lot more and yeah i just got back from a panel that chris gore was nice enough to invite me to last minute uh in la and they're fun. Like the panels are good. And I think it's important that we do them because there's so many bullshit panels at uh, cons, you know, like uh, the, the two of the panels we were up against in LA because our, our panel was 99% of uh, Hollywood films are garbage. Or why? That was the, that was yeah. the title of the panel is 99% of panel. Hollywood films are garbage. That's ballsy. Let's call it that you're in LA. Uh, that's right. And that's, that's Chris Gore's got juice there. He just does uh and juice juice, juice. <laughs> not they juice. i'm not gonna call him what you want me to call him <laughs> it's it's an old prison term when you got <laughs> juice means you got influence okay um so uh where was Austin. i yeah so the, the, the two panels we were up against are uh mermaids are black and bipoc exist in fantasy <laughs> so oh. and and that's good I think it's good. Have your panels and we'll have ours. And that's the way it should be. Uh, yeah. There was no protests or anything. And, you know, the place was packed and it was fun. Imagine, I think you guys should have a panel and call it White Guys Exist. <laughs> oh, t- <laughs> Hosted by Henry Cavill. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, it'd be packed. We exist. <laughs> uh, that's a good idea. Let's see if we can. Well, we'll see uh, how far we can take this but hell yeah the future is male yeah oh from cassius cleo question for gary i've seen this going around twitter a lot lady lately and was wondering who oh wait he's just miles morales never mind carry on okay you started to troll twitter quite a bit with this and you i think i don't know if it's you single-handedly were able to make it trend but i've noticed at least twice uh, in the last couple weeks it has trended uh, like Miles Morales is not Superman or like some he's version not Spider-Man. of Spider-Man. He's it's not. To... Oh, fuck. It's not. I'm thinking about Henry That's Cavill. Still. It's not Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to jump out the window. It's OK. Uh, uh, it, it, no, it's a, it, if you haven't heard of Miles Morales, I wouldn't blame you because he's just Miles Morales. He's just another. He is a Spider-Man, but he's not the Spider-Man. So, yeah, it started about a year ago. Um. I can't even remember what it was. I think it was, it started with uh, what is a woman. So I decided to do something like that with nerds and just say Miles Morales is Miles Morales. And it triggered everybody. Well, all the Marvel stands. Um, and it, it's just, it's just a fact. I'm, I'm making a factual statement. So it's a fun little experiment to play on Twitter. I've been doing it for months now and uh, it, it's, it gets the same results every time. So me and yellow flash had a little chat last week and we're like let's see if we can get it trending and <laughs> we did <laughs> so that was cool because it's easier to get stuff trending on twitter now that the trust and safety team is gone 
Now that the JJ's out, now that yeah. Yol and the JJ have hit the road, I was going to ask you if you've noticed uh, a big change in your following, a big change. In, I think Twitter is more fun. Like I, I got a ton more followers. Like I was already, I thought, oh, maybe if I really work hard, I could hit a hundred K by the end of the year. And it just pff, exponential. And it's, it's th- not even so much the follow, like followers are great, but like it is fun and things are a little bit looser. It's a lot looser. It's a lot more fun. I look, I almost look forward to going, I got to still meter my time on it, but, uh, uh, is de- miles Morales is definitely not Superman. And I, <laughs> and that has to be my Cowboy. tweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be my uh, bamboo tweet. I'm uh, Mercury. Miles Morales is just token Spider-Man. Yep. He's a very definition of a token character. Eric July has talked about this in length has, has some great videos on it. Great insight. Go check it out. Um, He's, you know, he's not even the first like Spider Man of color. Can we say that <laughs> Spider Man Sp- of color? Spy Pock. Yeah, Spy Pock. He's, he's a Spy uh, Pock. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Um, and it, I I fully believe they create these characters as it's it's a rights issue things. It's also they can virtue signal, but it's also hey, we have a backup just in case we lose the rights to Peter Parker and Spider Man. That's how Ben Riley started showing up back in the day. Uh, you know, Miguel O'Hara, that's, that's Spider-Man 2099, a character I actually like. It's got a very good video game. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's, it, we, we keep repeating the same stuff and, and we just have an entire generation who just doesn't think that shit happened before they were born. Hmm. Uh, that's part of the problem. A lot of ignorance and, uh, low information. Uh, and you try not to be a dick about it, but it's hard not to sometimes when, you know, like the thousandth time you've been called a racist or just because i said miles morales is miles morales wow it doesn't take much yep what do you say to people who get bent out of shape um you know uh, like whether it's fnt or geeks and gamers or just your own like solo content like oh why are you getting so upset just about a race swap like how come you're letting this bother you so much uh, the reason it's bothersome is the motivation behind it. It's not the race swap itself. Again, it's, it's, it's tokenism, it's pandering, but it's also a form of, uh, if you really want to get in the weeds on it, it's a form of racism itself. All right. So you're a saying, racer. yeah, yeah. So you're saying this white character is the only legitimate thing. So the only way we can lift up for it, for example, Lat- Latino people. Latinx. Is, <laughs> Latinx is to uh, give them this white character because they can't have a character of their own. They they don't have Zorro or they don't have a, a, a an original character that we can put the same time and energy. It, see, that's, everybody in in Encanto was Spanish. What the fuck? Yep. Well, you know they have to they have to take the legitimized character because they don't believe. Uh, that a new character uh, can make it and most don't. So they want to go for the safer bet and they try to hide behind a virtue signal when it's actually a combination of avoiding rights issues, being freaking woke. <laughs> it, they're both equal, by the way. Uh, and sure, it's been done in comics a lot, but you always default back to the main character, especially when it's a big one like Spider-Man. And if you do it with a sub character, nobody really cares. And that's what I cover. Uh, we don't talk about it with every character, but when it's so blatant, you you just have to talk about it because it's part of intersectionalism. Intersectionalism is Marxism. You know, people always go, what is woke? Marxism. That's your answer. It's Marxism. It's a pretty simple answer. They, they love, they think it's a big gotcha. Define woke. Intersectionalism, Marxism. It yeah. would be like if you take a sport that you really like and be like, all of a sudden there were changing rules of this sport that you've come to like know and love. And like maybe some of the rules, like, I don't know. I don't know if that's a horrible metaphor, but just take something that you really have loved for years and, and you've loved it the way it is. And there's a history to it. Um, and, and it has to do with really this, this, the, the history of the country. And just imagine that that, cause someone decides, yeah, let's, let's change that up to like, be more inclusive i guess that's and, what's happening with women swimming but <laughs> i guess yeah no problem there but i mean occasionally it works when it's done with a property and character but like it works because 
the story was good. Like ultimately they put the story first. They decided to change like one character, but this like Battlestar Galactica, they made Starbuck a girl. Everybody was against it, including myself, but like it turned out good. So you're I like, like Fine. That show. so they've had Hollywood has had multiple opportunities to prove all of us wrong who, who point this out. And we end up b- being proved right because they put no effort behind. It's just, we're race swapping the character. We're done. That that's, that's not enough. That's you have to still write a good story, and they just do it mostly to get headlines, to virtue signal, to make whatever their ESG scores look good. Whatever the reason, it's not done in the for the sake of storytelling or for the sake of art or creativity. Yeah, maybe like if we're gonna have a black Ariel, maybe she's from uh, not really a deep ocean, but like a lake or somewhere where she can stand. <laughs> so swimming is not even an issue. <laughs> I, agree <laughs> I, I need to get, and that way she, her hair doesn't have to get wet. So there you problem go. solved. <laughs> Multiple problems solved. Enoch, oh, what's up, Enoch, Uh Rest in peace, DC. Have fun with gay black Superman. To quote the Who, meet the old boss, same as the old boss. I'm out. Oh. Oh. That's very sad to see. He just seemed like a really solid dude. Uh, J.S. Pena, Pena, a Latinx. Thank you, Gary. I started Doctor Who with Christopher Eccleston last month. Eccleston last month. Do I stop after Matt Smith or do I give Peter Capaldi a chance? Mm, it gets pretty woke with Capaldi in season nine and ten, in particular. I would, uh, I would stick with season eight and probably end there. That's as far as you want to go. Okay, gets pretty cool. bad after that. Not as bad as Jody, but bad. Do you feel like woke Hollywood is is getting a a, a sense, some self awareness on how bad they're failing yet? Is it starting to hit them? I know it feels like we've been complaining and talking about this for like months and months, a year maybe. You guys even longer. Uh, just as far as I've been a part of Bright Night Tights, it's always been a through line, a theme. But you're like, okay, they just have their heads in the sand. They just don't know. They don't care. You know. Are they sort of sponsored to push a narrative? It doesn't matter how well these these things do. What's your sense of like, is it starting to click oh, in? It, 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 it's a conversation they're starting to have. And um, I, I don't think this should surprise anybody. It's, I guess it can be and it can't be. It depends on how long you've lived on the planet. I don't know. I, I just like sometimes shit takes a lot of time and it's a lot longer than we like. And, God, God knows, like being part of the the culture war for almost four years now, and some people have been in it for 10, you know, it's like, it's just your perspective on it. You think, because the crazy part is we feel like we're taking crazy pills. Like this shit is so obvious. This is so obviously bad. It's going to obviously fail and they keep doing it. How long can this go on? Well, I mean, with that much money involved and, you know, uh, Donald Trump said it like Hollywood's filled with a bunch of dumb, rich people. Ooh. It's just flat out a bunch of dumb, rich people. And it is there. I mean, there's decision after decision to prove that we have a bunch of evidence to prove that somehow they got up to where they were, but they're not that bright. Uh, but they're, but they wield a ton of power. And now we're finding out that the government might be behind all this. If they're behind Twitter and they're behind Facebook then they're behind Hollywood, trust me. Uh, so that might explain it, but yeah, it's starting to be openly talked about. Uh, I would have loved it for people to have an epiphany and say, you know, maybe it's a bad thing that we've used all of our entertainment property properties, our mainstream media, our access media and uh big tech to divide this country, to be so divisive and to, to really sell this whole, like you live in a white supremacist society bullshit. Uh, and that's not the kind of thing you can just, Oh, it's just kidding. We were being a little hyperbolic. No, no. now because you have a bunch of people actually believing it and you baked it into scripts, news articles, everything. And it was all scripted and it all came from one source when you're supposed to be competing with each other. And yeah, we all noticed. And now Hollywood is, yeah, didn't have the epiphany, but it's losing a bunch of money. It's all dried up. And across the board, the numbers are down 30% to 50%, which is about the same amount of people you've been alienating for four years. It's not rocket science. Do you think they'll blame inflation? Do you think they'll blame the economy? Oh, that's why people, oh, people just got used to, you know, sitting at home during the 
during the panty. You know, they just got used to just kicking their feet up and turning on the old Netflix and chill. They're still trying to to blame that, and that factored into like streaming blowing up. But uh, Spider Man No Way Home made almost two billion dollars while there were still wow. lo- lockdowns going on in parts of the country. So like that that just destroyed the narrative that like that blew it apart, and everybody like kind of kind of gave up on it. They're still trying, but yeah, they're going to use COVID economic downturn you know what that economic downturn came from the people you supported hollywood the very people you supported caused the economic downturn man-made yeah it's like not an oopsie when even freaking blackrock came out and said the central bank is engineering engineering a a recession and you know why because they need to because we fucking printed so much money you know, there needs to like you can't kick down the the can down the road anymore. It like it's going to happen. So I I doubt I don't know if it, they're engineering. I think it's happening just naturally at this point, and maybe it's controlled. I have, well, of course it's controlled, but like and they and like when BlackRock says that, who is I mean, that's practically the devil in my eyes. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, well, I think all rocks matter, but uh, you know, I'm not yeah, so quick to just judge. Sure. You know. <laughs> I I think that with the Twitter files and like Elon's takeover of Twitter and then the, all these Twitter files being dropped, I think it's you know every little thing is like waking up more and more of the population, right? But I think if you just had no clue, like if you weren't a social media person, but you're hearing about the Twitter files, it makes you go, oh damn, like they're really really meddling and it's not it's no longer a conspiracy theory it's no longer something you can like shit on the right wing for call somebody crazy we have receipts so even if like nothing ends up happening at least it's like okay this is one this is one more thing that is actually happening and not just a conspiracy theory no it it is it's actually happening and the government found uh, a lot of companies very easy to manipulate because they were run by a bunch of forgive me, 20 year olds, arrogant little freaking 20 year olds like Yoel Roth at the time when he showed up, he's probably in his thirties now, Mm -hmm. but like, just look at interviews. Like that guy was drunk with his power and on other things too, but (laughs) poppers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he was drunk (laughs) with power and yeah, he fucked around and he, and he's finding out right now, uh, that when you actually mess with people's rights, you know their their First Amendment rights, and the government was colluding with uh, with a corporation to usurp your rights. That cannot be undersold. It will be by the mainstream media, but that cannot be undersold. That is huge. And now they're trying. The mainstream media is trying to make it seem like he's a victim. They're like, "Oh, Yoel had to flee. He had to flee his home." I was like, "I'm sure he's just going from one home to the other home. Like, I think he's probably just on vacation." But. It's interesting to see how legacy media covers the Twitter files, if at all. And mostly they've just been very dismissive, like, oh, Matt Taibbi and Barry Weiss are running PR for Elon Musk instead of going deeper because the kind of then the jig is up for for all of them. Like even I even read something like even a show like Ellen is like tuned into the CIA and uh, kind of doing their bidding. So, yeah, yeah uh operate it's been brought up a lot lately but uh operation i think a mockingbird which was the cia planning people in newspapers in the 60s 50s 60s so of course it's still going on and they've got their back door and and for one they're not supposed to be doing anything here in the states at all uh but they are so uh i think it's time for a lot of these agencies to be disbanded uh that that'll probably never happen but they're useless and they are now just uh, party tools, uh, and and we still have a, a long way to go in this in this cultural battle. I mean, you know, I, I try to keep it in pop culture because uh, that's 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 my lane or whatever. That's just what I've been into all my life, and I know. But that's where I've uh, I've noticed the most uh, fuckery. Yeah, Henry Cavill just confirmed fired by James Gunn. Yep, but we we were talking about that before. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's a bad, 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 bad decision. It's going to be a lot of videos, a lot of a lot of fire tomorrow from the fandom. They ain't going to be happy. But yeah, sure enough, look how this is covered. Elon Musk stoked a storm of homophobic harassment against a former Twitter executive. This is what they write an article about. Yep. Poor gay yol. Gay yol. 
not that he not that his Trump derangement syndrome was so out of control that he couldn't even do his job properly. No, it's it's because he's gay and he's a victim of homophobia. Really? Did, did being gay prevent you from doing your job correctly, Yol? Does being gay prevent you from being a duplicitous asshole? No, it doesn't. And that's all he was. Uh, I think was, duplicitous asshole is like actually the name of a gay bar in New York City. I, or San Francisco. I'm not sure. <laughs> might, be, <laughs> might be a chain. <laughs> 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 no, it's it's terrible, but like th like are we surprised that this this kid who probably went straight from school to to Twitter yeah. probably doesn't have the best uh perspective on life uh was given this much power you know after get, you know getting indoctrinated into a university this is the process that has been going on for years this is why we can't abandon institutions and culture uh and and just walk away you, yeah, you gotta... and, and Elon and a few others pointed out kind of groomery tweets from Yol, but this is what the mainstream media is doing. Once you call somebody a groomer, they go, oh, no, it's homophobia. It's like they're linking or equating the two. Mm -hmm. It's a very scary precedent to set. It's it's a it's dangerous uh, on, on a lot of levels. For one, I don't make that assumption. I think uh, groomers can be straight or gay. There's lots of groomers, lots of diddlers out there. Mm -hmm. uh uh and uh, i think it's pretty indiscriminate but uh by by attaching it to the lgbtq plus uh community that's gaslighting in itself right like dangerous gaslighting and uh, uh you know uh, but like people are going hard in the pain on this they they just it, because there is so much irrational political bigotry towards you know, hey, just the take of don't mess with kids is now like some alt-right take. Oof. Which is some bullshit. That, that protecting yeah. children has become a part a partisan issue is partisan really issue. scary. And yeah. even with this article, oh, Twitter's longstanding struggle with, chi struggle with child abuse, the way they put it, instead of being like, well, since Elon Musk has taken over, they've really cracked down on, on CP stuff and how it's shared and eliminated certain hashtags but don't mention that just uh just mention the bad stuff it's gross it's really gross and uh y'all did nothing about it for all that time but now we're gonna we yeah, want to bring up QAnon. oh god nobody's talking about QAnon. of course the the blue pilled folks are gonna bring up QAnon if it suits them well there's blue anon now i think that's probably mm -hmm. more that's more of a real thing than QAnon. so yeah uh it's it's yeah. e, uh, elon you know blowing the doors off of uh twitter it's been great i love how he's doing it. i love the slow roll feels like we're building up towards something i still think he's got some some bigger stuff to come out with you support the weekly release not the binge i do i support the weekly release and not the binge you can always binge later <laughs> right uh, and odds I don't are care. most people are not going to be able to binge. Like even one Twitter file drop is like at least 30 tweets. And most people just don't have time. It, it gets really overwhelming when it's more than that. And I think they're doing this in bite size amounts, uh, because if they were going to release it, oh, that's, it's easy to dismiss and, uh, easier to ignore that way. But I mean, it, it shows the reality of, uh, you know, even the shadow banning one, which is the one we all knew was going on but we saw it so now and we how you were shadow banned like what category yeah. you are blocked from trending you are blocked from uh cert being searched i tell you youtube did that like they put the throttle on hard during the election in 2020 uh that month that month and a half like none of us in our sphere that i know that i talked to gained any subs and that's just never happened. Like you have to stop making content and walk away. We were all making content. We were putting stuff up. So like, and, and any sub we get, it, we're grateful for, but like none, like zero. I have goose eggs and I'm like, how is that even possible? Like I just put out a video like that never happens. And we were losing them. So uh, like YouTube is way worse than Twitter, a thousand times worse than Twitter. Really? Um, yeah, they like they they let me skirt, right? But like 
uh, lately, uh, most of the live streams are getting demonetized. Most of them are, whether they're getting flagged or not, whatever. Uh, I've been able to get most of them turned around by talking to a partner manager, but not everybody gets to do that, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and it's, it's more for visual, any, I, I, you know, live streams, or whatever. I just want you guys to be able to find them and they, and they definitely get throttled when they're not, uh, monetized and yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's probably going to get worse and be just like that. The next election, like they had no problem, like throttling everybody. They, they, even before the midterms, I, yep. I, it was strange timing for when I got my strike and was suspended for a week right before the, the content house thing and mm -hmm. I was like, well, well, right before the election. So, oh yeah. And Crowder got, uh, got suspended too. Yeah. Right and we've known it. for a while, you know, people are constantly saying, Oh, I'm, I'm unsubbed from this channel. I'm unsubbed from that channel. Yeah. I was unsubbed from Disparu the other day, uh, him and his lesbian haircut. Uh, oh, this fruit is uh, great. I'm happy I'm a Texan too. <gasps> Roy McClurg, thanks for the 50. Gary, I'm so happy you are a Texan. Chrissy, come join us. You are both an inspiration in the inane world we live in. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Roy. You, Roy. My great uncle was named Roy. Russell for 20. Next Texas meetup in Fort Worth at Billy Bob's, please. Is Okay. What's Billy Bob's? Is it a bar or is it a like barbecue a place? Bar. I'm down. Uh, Crypto Kev, did you scare your neighbors already, Gary? No. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, the neighbors are actually really nice. It's so unusual. Well, I mean, you know, in San Francisco, my neighbors, they were uh, they worked for the Chinese consulate and they were super cool. But uh, their house kept on getting broken into. Like, all oh, my house. God. Yeah. yeah. I was live streaming one time when there was a home in home invasion at next door. Damn. That, was, that was crazy. I walked out and there's just cops everywhere. And uh, that's like it, that at the time it was the fourth one on my street. And I was just talking to Melissa about that. I'm like, remember when we used to like not even think about moving when there was a murder around the corner <laughs> and uh, there was four houses that got home invaded on our street. We're like, hmm, that's crazy. N neighborhoods going downhill. <laughs> you know, like we didn't you think get about used to it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like just in New York City, I'm just stepping over crackheads, like on my way, on my way to work on Mondays. It's like, all right, hey buddy, <laughs> you need help pulling your pants up? No, you're good. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, okay. You don't have to do that. Someone's got a case of the Mondays, and they're just overdosing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Matthew Hammond for five, Gary needs to watch the Babylon B YouTube video series. Californians I've moved seen. to Texas. It is great if you have not seen it. It is very accurate. It is very good. Yes. What do you say to people, Gary, who complain? Well, this is just the broader topic of like, you can't make everyone happy, but what yep. do you say to people who complain like, oh, F and T is too political. It's always, they're too negative. Why are we talking about politics? Does that, do you see these comments? Does it bother you? Like, and how do you feel like it is important to talk about politics in the scheme of the culture war? In the grand scheme of the culture war, when it's like a broad thing, yeah, I think like when Twitter files are dropping or some big freaking news happens, but like getting into the minutia of like Senate hearings and shit like that, I don't know. I'm the no. Yeah. yeah. But like uh, the politics have, has invaded the culture. So I think it's just unavoidable. I, if I'm just being honest, right? So that's, I do, I see the comments um, and I, I take the good feedback and you can like genuinely figure it out for the most part. Uh, there's a, there's a thing about live streaming is there is two different audiences, right? Well, there's actually three different audiences on your channel. If you do live streaming and video, there's a video audience, there's a viewing live stream audience, and there's a participating live stream audience. And they're all different and you all have to you have to try to make as many people happy. But the, I just, just focus on, I my I'll use my ADD or whatever, and I just focus on the topic at hand, and we'll let the chips fall where they may, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I think everybody should have their say, and they should keep saying it because, like, we do. Like one time, we did an FNT where we put up like way too many memes. Now we were having a good time, but the audience wasn't having that good. A time. I listened to them. Really, but, too many. Yeah. There is such a thing as too many memes. There is a thing as too many memes. When it was just us cackling over each other, like, <laughs> like even Jeremy and Ryan came and talked to me about it. I'm like, sure, we'll, we'll, 
I mean, you know, when it's enough, when I get enough emails and stuff, I absolutely listen. We listen to our to the the audience, not our audience. We share an audience here on YouTube. You do not belong to me or Chrissy. We are part of it. I watch as much YouTube as a lot of you guys do. So like, and I, I think it's really important because you get a gauge of what people like uh, and what I like and what I'm entertained by. And uh, I think it's important to have that feedback. But like, it, yeah, we, we definitely skirt the line and it depends on the guest. But as I said, FNT will always be a pop culture first show. Always. And you are very tuned in to the to the feedback, yeah. And uh, that's that's most important. You guys genuinely do care and listen to people. Um, and as the show has gotten much bigger over the last, I guess, like the year I've been involved, you've gotten uh, a lot bigger guests to come on. Alex Jones recently, we had Sargon of Akkad, Dankula was on. I think even uh, I know they're maybe more controversial to like uh, most people, but also you know. You know, you've had Drew Hernandez on. There's people who have take issue with his journalism. There's people, Crip Daddy was on. There's people who take issue with his sense of humor. Uh, we've had Anthony Cumia, and Nick Ricada. Do you feel like you're, you know, you get more backlash or more negative feedback the, the more controversial of a guest you bring on? Or do you feel like you're kind of help ushering them to, to the masses to help people see a different side of them? Like the, the, a good example of that was definitely with Alex Jones, I think. Yeah, I, I the first Alex Jones appearance was crazy, uh, but the next one was completely fine, not a problem. You for one, YouTube had no problem with actually poor Gundam. <laughs> Gundam, it's not even fair because Gundam's great <laughs> on the show, right? But Gundam. our shows with Gundam get get age restricted. Right? Wow, I'm not gonna stop having them on. I love Gundam. Papa Gundam is great, but He's YouTube funny. does have it out for the poor guy. Um yeah. But yeah, Alex, like completely monetized. Uh, Anthony was freaking awesome. I love Anthony. Uh, I love Drew. I think it's good. Like Benny Johnson came on when we were in uh, Florida. Yeah. He was great. And I think it's really good to bring the political pundits in and yeah, show that other side. Uh, of course, they're, that's their strong suit is politics, but a lot of them are tuned in to to the pop culture and culture aspect way more than than we think. And we need more of that because there was so much of the like, you know, pundits giving, you know, it's fine to like give things shit, but like you can do it in a fun way and still understand that, you know, you don't want to disrespect all anime fans. You might not like anime or manga, but like, that's a huge fandom. It's an important fandom, you know? So you could say it's not my thing. Right. But like insulting them, bad idea. It's, it's the same as all the political pundits who said, stop being a virgin in your basement and playing your video games. That is the stupidest fucking thing to say. That is an easy way to alienate somebody and see them go to the other side. A lot right? of people have it out for basements. I think generally basements are unfairly targeted. I, I totally agree. For one, they keep you safe <laughs> from tornadoes. And it's extra space. It's on you. It's, it's, it's bonus. It's soundproofed. Because it's underground, right? You can't have them here in Texas. But, uh, yeah, basements get a bad rap. How did that come together with Benny Johnson? Because uh, he, he jumped on the when we were all together in Orlando. It was so exciting. We're at the Geeks and Gamers content house. And I walk in, and Benny Johnson is there. I was like, oh, my God, how did this happen? He was a big, He's a big fan of you guys, right? Or he reached out. Yeah, Benny. I first discovered Benny three years ago when he was – talking to dave rubin and he mentioned the fandom menace and i'm like what a pundit mentioned the fandom menace so i put it in a video automatically and i'm like oh this guy's tuned in this guy's tuned in all of a sudden like uh we, we chatted a couple times on twitter and i and i noticed like his thumbnails are paying homage which i love by the way and mm -hmm. yeah we just started talking more and you know once in a while he'd be all hey you rock and i'm like you rock too and that's how, that's how the DMs start, right? And we started talking, and then when he came, uh, that guy's great. Benny is great. Like, he's, like, full of energy. He loves his country. Uh, he understands that pop culture and culture are a huge... That is America, and you can't ignore it. Uh, and a genuinely nice guy who knows his stuff, you know? Knows yeah, his stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was great having him there because, you know, he, I, he's in Tampa. Uh, yeah, love Benny. Love Benny. 
Good guy. He, he was fun to have on. Uh, oh, from Torgo the White. Thanks for the five. Gary, Michael Mellis is about to release his new book, The White Pill. Please try and bring him on FNT. He is also a comic book nerd. Oh, my God. He would be amazing. I love Michael Mellis. Harvey Picard wrote a comic about him. No. <laughs> really? Yeah. Ego and hubris. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. He's a fascinating so, guy. Uh, yeah, Michael Malice is kind of kind of legendary. So, yeah, I, I would be fanboying out a little bit. But I would definitely have him on. Okay. For sure. I'll, Absolutely. I'll try. I'll try I, I'd on that. probably have. I can't think of people I wouldn't have. Well, no, I can pick up like three. I, I wouldn't have on. But, I mean, they're really obvious, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, from from, really from uh, Biden. <laughs> from Woolis. Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have Ye on right now. Uh, but no, maybe he's, late, he's, like later, maybe like, like six months, <laughs> yeah. maybe six months after, after Hanukkah, let's just say, yeah, after Hanukkah and the episode is over. <laughs> maybe we have one, uh, <laughs> after, the, after the high holidays, no, after the high <laughs> holidays. <laughs> well, uh, hello, Gary and Chrissy. I wanted to ask about the lore on Chrissy joining FNT. Oh God. I was, I mean, I, I think, did I reach out to you or did you, re you reach out to me? Oh, she begged. <laughs> just tons, tons of nudes oh my god yeah you know just please <laughs> money and every no no uh i i met you on a stream with jeremy i think it was when genia got fired gina carano got oh fired. my god it was the quartering stream i got drunk yeah. that was a good stream though that was a good was Jer Jer jeremy's a good guy yeah we like jeremy uh so i met i i'm like hey and uh, as was there i'm like Chrissy's funny. She's cool. We need to bring her on. Yes. So eventually we brought you on and you kept coming on and like, Hey, let's, let's do this regular. Let's do this on the regular. We need, <laughs> we need more uh girl representation. I was just, you're, you're kind of a diversity hire to be honest. Oh yeah. With. Okay, good. I, I can help you get more girls. Uh, I keep a list. Hey, my, the, the, the percentage has gone up. Uh, X-ray girl. Yes. Looked at, uh, it's up to 9.9%. .9%. That's a huge leap for my wow. job. From six point six. Violent Kevin, do you know what my percentage of of women viewers is? Three. Three. <laughs> I can double check to see if it's changed. I need to do more baking streams. I need to do I, something. That that's not going to get you. That's going to get you more male viewers. <laughs> I need to do more in my underwear. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ulfidnar Berserker for ten. Hey Chrissy, how's life treating you? Don't know if you mentioned this, but how did you and Gary Dolph get connected? Because I am glad to see true redheaded representation. Oh, we were just telling that story. Yeah. And I became like a stray cat uh, and Gary just kept leaving out milk. And uh, no, <laughs> it's I fun. It's honestly one of the most cool. fun things I've ever been a part of. I love you guys. Like you guys inspire me. Um, it's always exciting. Every single Friday, I'm like pumped. I'm like, yes, who's coming on? It's always exciting, which is uh not something that always happens with a with a weekly show or um no. sometimes i get sick of myself sometimes like i have to go live again but then you know you you get it up and you're like yes you can find a story or something that fires you up but i'm always fired up to do f and t you always find a way to get it up you have to <laughs> yeah you know, to, to, to seal the deal no for like it it ha for one it's it's genuinely fun I, i'm hanging out I, this is going to sound super gay but i'm hanging out with my friends and that's that's the funnest part and the chat is now this huge part of the show and now that that we can keep the chat because i was uploading it somewhere else but keeping the chat up has been uh, that's changed everything with the show that like that interaction because it's i mean they are part of the show now and it's freaking hilarious uh oh, yeah. but yeah for people to like to get youtubers and other people to sit down and watch something on friday night for one what a bunch of losers and <laughs> uh that's me uh, and yeah, like it's, it's, it's crazy that, you know, that wasn't, I picked that night specifically a long time ago to go live because I'm like, ah, I'm sober. I don't go out and party. So this will be the perfect night <laughs> for so, a nerd loser to, to do a, a it's live stream. Great. And even if you watch it by yourself another, at another time, you're like, oh, you, you don't feel alone. You can keep up with the chat. And, uh, I don't know. It's, it's great. It's, I honestly it makes don't you want to like stay home on a Friday, right? No, I, 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 I have a better time on Friday night tights than any party I went out to. So it's, it, it's, 
yeah, it's just the way, I guess it's the way of the world. Friday night may not mean as much, but mm -hmm. uh, it it's worked. It's tons of fun and we're just going to keep doing. And like, it, you know, there's no prep. <laughs> like we did some prep a couple times. We'll do some prep. We're like, Hey, Frosk. And then you <laughs> buy a yeah. wig or something like that. And that was a classic, but yeah, like a lot of times it's just, you know, I'll make you watch a movie. Uh, I don't think everybody's going to be able to watch Avatar because it's three hours three long. Three hours long, and I wish I had. Maybe it was in my my uh, my homework calendar, and I just didn't see it till this week. But I was like, "Oh uh, man, I, I have to last minute it." But like, we'll we'll try to find a way. James Some Cameron says, see it. "Avatar Two goes even farther with female empowerment than Marvel by having some of its warriors be pregnant." Have you heard about this? <sighs> oh, that is such. For one. Um, I, I, you're not going to send a pregnant woman out to a pitch battle. You know, I did see a pregnant woman in the gym today and I'm like, you Ooh. fucking go girl. That's a badass. That's an actual badass woman. She was like eight months pregnant. She's in there freaking working out. That was She's like, She's in yeah. there trying to break her water. She's yeah. probably trying to get it moving. Right. That's a woman, right? That, like not, not a pitch battle. Uh, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Not, that's, that's stupid. Marvel did that too. Marvel did that too. There's a there's a cup. There's an X Men book, and then there's a Spider Woman, a version of Spider Woman that goes out and fights pregnant, Oops. and it's just like, no fucking comic book fan wants to see that. We we don't want to see it, you know. Yeah, don't most cultures revere? I mean, definitely pregnant women. Who knows what they think about women? But like, I, I feel like being pregnant is a a pretty universal like time to take it easy. That yeah, yeah that's just it's just dumb. I mean, everything about that is that a lot of things can be debatable, except for pregnant women going out to fight in a war. <laughs> yeah, they don't want pregnant women lifting a box more than 20 pounds or 15 pounds. Oh, my God. Uh, everybody's always talking about female yeah. empowerment. Cameron said in a new chat with fellow filmmaker uh, Robert Rodriguez from Variety's Directors on Directors series. But what is such a big part of a woman's life that we as men don't experience? Well, this is conflicting with what we've been hearing this year and a couple figures in our uh, in Biden's administration. Now, a warrior who's six <laughs> months pregnant in battle. Uh, you want to know why you don't think about it? Because it's stupid. That's why. <laughs> God, like this. This guy is so disconnected, man. He I think went he's on the water too long and the pressure has fucked with his brain. It, it doesn't happen in our society. It probably hasn't happened for hundreds of years. But I guarantee you, back in the day, women had to fight for survival and protect their children. And it didn't matter if they were pregnant and pregnant women. Yeah, but I mean, like, there's also stuff that we've moved past, like uh, non-consensual sexual stuff. You know what I mean? Like, that happened back in the day. But we're, let's not revisit that. What is he talking back in the day, like 50,000 years ago, mm -hmm. when, when it was like... Uh a group of hunter gatherers fighting over a freaking mastodon or something like that. Like I would like you to cite uh, where the pregnant women were going out in the battle regularly. It, I'm sure it happened once or twice, probably with a couple of women who didn't even know they were pregnant, but <laughs> uh, Toilet babies. it was a regular thing. Uh, and there's probably a reason uh, cause in the past uh, in a lot of ways, we were smarter. We were much more practical. We were also horrible too, but we were much more practical. And, uh, yeah, staying back and protecting the kids is just as important as going out and getting, uh, your, you know, disemboweled in a fucking war. So this is just pushed to me. It just seems like it's pushing. It's like, even if you're pregnant, you don't need no man and you can do everything for yourself and you're an independent woman, even if you're knocked up. Uh, it said, he said, let's take the real boundaries off. To me, it was the last bastion that you don't see. Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel, all these other amazing women come up, but they're not moms and they're not pregnant while they're fighting evil. Well, You're I don't know. Is he, is he a, a biologist? Mom. Does yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure enough for the way of water, Kate Winslet didn't just break records for holding her breath longer than Tom Cruise. What? That's a thing. She also played Navi Warrior with a noticeable baby bump during the battle series Marvel and the DCEU when it finally figures out what's up there, have to step up their game. Oh, that is cringe. That is so... <laughs> oh. But what is a woman? <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> I guess you're seeing it tomorrow. 
unfortunately yes i like i'm not looking forward to it like i this is torturous and um whoa wg thank you so WG, much what up Damn, you, i'm gonna have to send you a nude for this hi chrissy any chance we can get gary to raise our christmas cheer by playing wham's last christmas on his guitar? it's rumored to be the only alternate version george michael approved of before he kicked the bucket true story you play the guitar, gary uh no i play the bass what's he talking about i don't play the guitar. i could probably learn it though uh whoa, whoa. Dun, 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 i don't know would you rather have a nude from chrissy or me singing that song whoa. wg it's up to you <laughs> why why pick or i could play it nude either way yeah i mean i didn't say the nude was gonna be of me oh uh, yeah see uh, it could be really on brand for for wham because they were gay <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> i love back in the 80s eh, wham's not george i couldn't be gay wham even sounds gay like uh, it's it, the, it is wow the sound the of your, your butt cheeks make hitting each other okay uh here in the steadfast for five amazon wheel of time series had a pregnant woman fighting a group of men while in labor oh uh, god no. take that you like it placenta on your foot <laughs> oh take that james cameron oh no it did did it really wow Zach told for oh. five. But I want to make a mo a pregnant woman fighting montage. Jennifer Lawrence was the first woman to ever fight in battle while also hella pregnant. Wow. Yes, I she we, did. I think we could still run with that. I think we can definitely, if you have time. Uh yeah, maybe a J Law. A J Law thing. A J Law appearance. She oh God. She is as dumb as a bag of hammers, that poor girl. I thought you were gonna say a bag of ham, but a bag of ham too. Well, she, she admitted <laughs> later, like she 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 got she left. She uh, is a middle school dropout, not a not a high school dropout. Middle school, middle school dropout. What an idiot! I know. Wow. Like she should have waited till at least tenth grade. Like when I and for one, I got kicked out. I didn't drop out. I wanted to stay. Yeah. They just didn't want me around. Do you think, based on that Avatar two article, do you feel like it's going to be going the way of maybe Black Panther two, where they focus too much on like women empowerment? I I don't know if it's going to be like James Cameron who's trying not to get me too'd because that's what it sounds like right now. Somebody mm -hmm. got there's some serious dirt on that guy. Uh, yeah, he sounds like the guy who got caught cheating, and he's like bringing his wife roses every day. Uh, oh no yeah he, that's what he sounds like but um i think there's a very good chance it could be the way of woke yes avatar 2 the way of woke the way of the woke woke water cash is victus damn thanks for the 50 hi chrissy gary why do you call jody the first female doctor when that is false the actual first female doctor was played by april o'neill in the prawn parody uh from 2014 you can really feel her enthusiasm and the energy she puts into the role when she grabs her tits. <laughs> uh, it was, was that 2000? That was in 2014. It was, was it 2014? No, it was a long time. There was a, you're talking about the prawn parody, but there was a, a, uh, uh, what was it called again? There was a children in need special that had a female doctor too. That grabbed her tits. It was what about one of, Dr. Quinn, medicine woman. It was one of the uh, girls from Absolutely Fabulous. Uh, okay. No, uh, I have not seen any Doctor Who prawn parodies. Uh, but the reason I called Jody the first female doctor is because that's what all the media was calling her for th for three years. First okay. female doctor, Jody Whitaker. Uh, uh, the first female doctor played by Jody Whitaker. That's a quote I actually took from the Access Media and just ran with it. Wow. That's great. Chrissy, I'll hail the prawn parodies. I'm I'm down with prawn parodies. I have no problem with them. I think they're funny. Uh, yeah. I've seen a couple push-ups. Chrissy, show Gary the comics I gave you. Oh, yes, I have them all over here. I have Batman the Long Halloween. I have Kingdom Come here. I have Batman Hush here. I have a whole uh, push-ups section of my bookcase here. And you got to read all those. More. Those are like classic best of the best. Yes, stuff. I know. They are, the, they are the classics. The OG uh kyle klukin for five you should look into the acme comedy company in minneapolis minnesota from what i hear it's a great club oh and good times sounds good kyle um roger's dad come to minnesota chrissy wow i have a lot of minnesota fans like maybe five or something yeah 
Is there any police there? <laughs> You're all the cops. Oh, surly sob. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the 20. I'm 48 years old and I get my picture taken with Santa every year in crazy costumes. We're going tomorrow dressed as a married couple of human flies from the atomatic at atomic oh, era. Oh, I almost can't read. Atomatic. <laughs> <laughs> Aromatic from the atomic era. Unrelated. Your show in Vineland was great. Oh, thank you. That was fun. Oh, my God. That was like a very fun, wild show at this bar. But you could just tell, like, I had never been to Violin, but you walk, I walked into the room. I was like, okay, this is like a fun, maybe more blue collar, like just based kind of crowd. It's, it's good when you can tell right away that the show's going to be good. Uh, from XSL, what if Cavill was Gladiator, Hyperion, or Sentry? That would still be kind of like a knockoff Superman with Hyperion and Sentry for sure. Mm -hmm. Ah, this it's super disappointing, man. I didn't it's think they James Gunn would be that stupid, but uh I wonder who he's got lined up. Mazit was that. Oh, thanks, Mazit, for the 20. With the news that Henry Cavill not returning as Superman, could you, Gary, or the Fellowship put out a poll on who cares about the future of a James Gunn led DC film universe? I put one out, but y'all got greater reach. Hey, yeah, I'll put a I'll put out a poll. Maybe he'll respond. He's he's, he's kind of sensitive to some stuff. Like uh, he went after Josh at Den of Nerds and like, you know, whatever with Josh at Den of Nerds. But uh, like, I think the way he went at like throwing in the parents basement shit at the end, I, I, uh, that's just, that's basic bitch stuff. Again, it's basement hatred. It yeah. is. Albert, uh, not a retro for five. It sucks that Cavill isn't Superman now. I feel for his successor already, but knowing it will really irk Anna makes it a little more bearable. Uh, oh wow! Oh uh, it, yeah, I uh, I don't know how and and it's probably not gonna be happy. That would be my guess. Big simp, a big simp, big me. Henry simp. Tommy D, Chrissy, you are the best. Thank you for putting that in all caps. So I know you're serious. Sailor Mercury, never forget James Gunn supported Gina's cancellation. Ooh, really? Ooh, I think that's correct, and I did forget that. Yuck. I want to say I think that's correct. I think he said something like consequence. Consequence culture. Wrong, something to that effect. JGM director. Damn, Superman unemployed. What the hell is next? I, I, I mean, my hot take on the Cavill thing is I think DC's done. I think like they had their chance. The superhero thing is fading real fast. They're going to need minimum two years to get things going. And I just don't think I think they will find that when they come out with the films, they'll still make some money, but you'll see that diminishing returns. You're not going to see an automatic billion uh, with a Batman. Like you didn't get that with a Batman movie. That that should be. Uh, they were still using COVID as an excuse, but mm -hmm. like a Batman movie needs to make a billion dollars. A Superman movie needs to, needs to make a billion dollars. Guess what? Superman movie would make a billion dollars. The one with Henry Cavill in it. The one with Henry Cavill in it. So uh, good luck. I, you know, for DC fans, I just want them to have good stories because they deserve it. They're good fans. They're actually really good, passionate fans. Um, and I want to see them too, because I love this character. But um, yeah, this is uh, right now not getting off on the right foot. And wow, they better come out with some really, James Gunn better make the most fucking traditional DC stories imaginable if he has a a chance and the thing again the things are going against them marvel has burned up all the superhero gold goodwill that's not his fault getting rid of henry cavill is his fault and now people who are starting to forgive james gunn are going to start to remember that he was supporting Jen, you know canceling yeah, yeah. gina carano so that that forgivingness will be gone uh wish him luck they should have kept henry cavill and just made him made his character trans or something i feel like probably <laughs> Dustman yeah, Mirage Henry played like freaking Conan or the Shadow or some pulp thing, he'd be great. He'd oh, be yeah. Great. Like anybody, Shadow. Anybody with their shirt off. Uh, how about Henry Cavill as Omni Man in a live action invisible? Invincible. Invincible? Maybe. But that's another bad Superman. I mean, I liked Invincible, but I'm like, I'm personally I'm over the bad Superman trope. I had a hard time seeing it. There you go. 40 K Invincible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Ah, uh, Sith King. It's invincible, not invincible. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just found out about Henry. He was the only reason I was looking forward to DC movies. IMO, their only shot at a comeback was a Henry-led proper Superman movie, Truth, Justice, and the American Way. Yeah, it's an inexplicable decision. You needed some kind of goodwill going into, you had James Gunn, that was goodwill. And if you brought in Henry, and if you just said, okay, we're going to start from scratch here, people probably would have been fine. Like yeah. even, that, you know, I like Ben Affleck as Batman, but like Henry was kind of like, that's a deal breaker. That's a deal breaker with a lot of people. So now he just alienated fans who aren't going to come back. And it, like, is your new Superman that important to you, dude? Is it really that important to you to like alienate the percentage of Henry fans, which is pretty big, Ugh. including um, the, 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 the number of women who would have got, it would have broke records for a superhero movie. The number of women that would have seen a, a, a Henry Cavill return to Superman. Oh yeah. Marksman off. Uh, give Henry a 40 K show or movie to do. That might be his next th That maybe that's the thing. Cause he's really into that. But like it crowdfund that shit to make it separate it from Hollywood completely. Dan Richards, if Gunn has 10 year DCEU arc planned, it makes sense. If he does, but that's 10 effing years. I don't think superhero movies last that long. That's me. And I like them. And I'm like a fan. Yeah. So it seems like he should have been safe. Like play, play the hits. Don't try to be edgy. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Well, the thing is, now they're going to have to reinvent Superman again. You can't like do a Christopher Reeve like they did with Superman Returns. Um, and whoever you get, fair or not, uh, is going to get compared to Henry Cavill. Uh, and I think it's fair because you got rid of Henry Cavill. So he bet this person better be Henry Cavill and he best look like fucking Superman. Mm -hmm. He better not uh, ignore leg day. Uh, XSL name keto drinks for every occasion. What? Uh, I guess vodka soda, Trulies, spite seltzers, keto drinks. It does nothing, just uh, as long as it doesn't have sugar in it. Yeah, water, water, of course. Good old fashioned water, vitamin and water zero. Matthew Hammond, what was the transition like getting out of prison? People get out and go back in. How did you prepare for, for success where others failed? Hmm. That's a good question. This, I wonder if this is directed at me or Gary. Yeah. Well, when'd you get out? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do time, Chrissy? <laughs> Doing hard time. Um, it was, I was young and it was a long, it was like 29 years ago. So, uh, the transition was, I had to go through a process when I was in like, uh, I talked about this when I did my little lockdown stream on people preparing to be confined and like oh. at six month point, you're going to go fucking nuts. You're going to lose your mind. You're going to lose your shit. That happens to everybody. Um, wow. But, and that really happened. Like, oh yeah. Like, I, I lost my ago, shit. Uh, I lost a bunch of fights. I got super, super sick. Uh, I got down to 130 pounds in there. I had a, wow, a stomach boy. virus that they couldn't figure out because it was fucking prison. So it was not fun, but, uh, when I got healthier, uh, I, I started working out a lot and I just focused on, I'm never coming back to this place. I fucking hate it. This sucks. I'm never coming back to this place. There's nothing that can make, like, I, I, there's no drug or anything that can tempt me to come back to this place. So it might, maybe it worked, but I just minded my own business. And when I got out, I went to meetings, uh, my parents, said you can live here for a couple months you need to find a job now how old were you yeah. when you got out i was 20 23 wow and how long were you in for uh three years holy fuck you were so young i was a pup wow. and that was like after i'd done a year in county so i did four total um and that was separate there was like a year between that but um yeah so the transition was very difficult. I had major uh, PTSD, like massive PTSD. If you snuck up on me, I was going to punch you in the face. Uh, if somebody like I felt like disrespected me, I was I was ready to throw that, like that's it. And uh, I was in a you have to be or else like yeah. someone's going to drop a soap in front of you. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah, you got, I mean, you just got to be on and it's hard to turn that off once you get out in society and you got to act completely different. 
So I, of course, my first job was like this <laughs> retail job. I was a, a good friend of mine gave me a job because he knew like I was having a hard time finding work because uh, I had to lie on every application. So, Damn. you know, cause about the felony thing, you just, you said no. Cause if you said yes, you weren't getting the job. So he got me in and uh, gave me this job and I'm forever grateful. My friend Doug, and uh it slowly acclimated me i you know i got in trouble a bunch of times because like some old man was returning his video and he got a little cross with me <laughs> I, I went off on him you know i'm lucky i didn't get fired uh but yeah yeah it was just a slow process and it was me doing the work so i was going to meetings going to aa meetings na meetings all the time had a sponsor wow. uh, just went to work went home and for a long time i was just so grateful to be home and to like have lived through that. Cause there were times when it was pretty iffy, but um, it, you know, like, like when the riots went down, when the LA riots went down, it went off in Folsom prison. It fucking went off. And that was scary as hell. And they didn't lock anything down. And it looked like your, like your movie prison riot. There's like flaming mattresses coming off the fucking. What? And, wow. Yeah, just dude, it was full on race riot, like <laughs> just crazy. And the cops didn't do shit for a while. So uh yeah, I just uh hung out my cell and tried not to die of smoke inhalation. And uh and you know, but yeah. You didn't have like a prison posse, you didn't have like a no, like a no, because I didn't, like your gang of guys, you're like no. you didn't have a Samantha and a Charlotte, no. No, I like I you know, I was kind of a bookworm, right? So I just stayed minded my own business, read books, stayed in shape, but like did not go around hanging with the posse, get gambling, drugs, all the other stuff. I was told very early on by somebody, don't mess with uh, uh, bags of sticks, don't mess with gambling, <laughs> and don't okay. mess with drugs, and you'll get out of here. And mind your own business. Don't fucking snitch. I followed don't all snitch, those rules. Don't. Don't like break up fights. Or yeah. Don't, don't, yeah. Don't try to be a hero. No, don't get involved. Like, oh, and the other one is like, if you get in a fight, you have to fight. Okay. Yeah. If somebody, Damn, like, I would suck at prison. I would fail. To. Yeah. So when I got out, I just, it slowly acclimated myself to society through just the discipline, like freaking like, at a, at, you know, fear is a great motivator and fear of not going back. My parole officer told me, All right, you should leave. You should get out of California right now because I had two strikes. So the third one is 25 years to life. <gasps> no matter what I did, if it's another felony, it's 25 years to life. So he's like, you should get out of here. Uh, and I'm like, I can't, with what? <laughs> with the 200 bucks you gave me? No. So I just had to make it work. And, Wait, uh, are there a lot of bags of sticks in prison? I would think um, no. There, I mean... Not a lot, no. Uh, but they, uh, my theory was they, they, for one, they put uh, trans people on the yard. Uh, and I think it's to, to keep the yard calm. I think they, so they, women. they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. A guy, a guy, uh, as would probably like him a lot, you know, <laughs> as is kind of gal. Okay. The guy with boobs. Okay. Uh, and uh, they were very popular on the yard, extremely popular on the yard with some. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh, now I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But as far as the other stuff, I never, I never saw any. So, like that. Saw plenty of fights. Saw people get stabbed. Uh, saw people get shot. Uh, yeah. with rubber bullets and then real ones. And then, uh, yeah. Saw people catch on fire. Saw a guy get stabbed in the neck with a pencil, and his blood came out like freaking Monty Python. It's all kinds of shit. Yeah. Whoa. Met some famous, uh, Craig Pyre. Uh, um, Gator, the skater, Mark Good Gator, guy. who he was friends with Tony Hawk, uh, killed his girlfriend. Um, I used to party with that guy. Uh, saw him in prison. Craig, uh, Pires. Craig Pyre's the the CHP officer who killed Kara Knott. Uh, I think it was Pyre. I think yeah, but I yeah yeah he was a CHP officer who who murdered a woman after cool. he killed her in San Diego in Poway. Yeah, piece of shit. Uh, yeah, wow. so lots of pieces of shit, lots of pieces of shit who deserve to be in there. Wow. So it's damn. a damn shame that they're letting so many people out. Uh, cause I didn't meet a lot of good people in there. I met a couple, but you know, 
Did you make any friends that you still talk to? Yeah. Not that I still talk to. No, uh, the one I talked to the most died. We went back out. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Uh, but no, that, that, nobody that I talk to now, if I ran across somebody, I probably wouldn't even recognize them. But so many people go back in. So many people go back in. It's ridiculous. And it's, and it's just, it's that revolving door. For one, there's nothing that really rehabilitates you. Uh, so it's, it's on you as an adult, uh, but people feel trapped and hopeless and that their only option is drugs and crime. It's, it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. And, and all the, uh, you know, everything you hear about the place, as far as like, there's, uh, there's way more black people than white people. Yes. That's a real thing. It's a real thing. And it's disturbing, you know? Uh, but then there's the massive racism in there, which is unbelievable, dude. They Segre well, at least that this was 30 years ago. Okay. So you could still smoke in there, but they would not put you in with another race. Like you really would, wow. separated you by race. And it was important back then. Cause if they didn't, you'd die. Uh, and like the, the, like the immigrants I'll call them. That's not what they were called in jail. were not ever housed with the Chicanos cause they hated each other. They hated each other. So, uh, yeah, was, Chicanos, Mexicans. Yeah. So no. there's, uh, American born Mexicans or, or part American. And then there's, then, then, it, then there's the North Enos in California, like the Northern and the Southern ones, they hated each other too. So there's all kinds of weird shit that's still going on. They just can't smoke now. That would be the worst. Like not yeah. being able to smoke. With no cigarettes. Yeah. Ooh, just that'd, be terrible. Terrible. that'd be the worst. <laughs> At least I got the yeah. smoke cigarettes in there. Did you have to buy them or they just gave them out? No, you bought them. They were barter too. Like that's the, another thing that's true is they're full on barter. You can get, like, get tattoos, whatever you want. You could get drugs. <gasps> did uh, you get any tattoos? Uh, I did. I did get one in there. Cool. I did get one in there. And oh, well, I got two, but I covered one up because it was pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Okay. Are they secret? No, I, I'll show one. Oh, that one? My wizard. Wow, that's a big one. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That doesn't look too bad. No, and the guy did it like um, old school style. Like that. Did it With take the... a long time? Yeah, it did. We had oh. time. You did <laughs> have time. Yeah, you could do it the long way. I like reading a book, you know. <laughs> I'm Demon Microwave. Gary, you've birthed a monster. I wonder if this is about me. Or his son. Uh, Hose a Contra Raz. Any chance we will see Gary's underwear tonight? His camera is firmly in place. It's firmly in place and I'm wearing shorts. <laughs> Boring. Uh, dark side with love. <laughs> hey, Chrissy. Gary, thank you for all the great content and laughs from you and everyone at FNT. Could you recommend some good Superman and Captain America reading material? Hail Simcast, hail FNT. Uh, absolutely. A Superman for all seasons by, uh, Jeff Loeb and Tim sale. Fantastic book. Um, there's even a Mark Wade now the Superman. Was it rebirth? Was it rebirth chat? The one Mark Wade did. Afterbirth. It might've been afterbirth. No, Mar uh, uh, that one was good. Well, I'm brain farting right now. Uh, what do you say? Captain America. I would start with uh, oh you can't find the reprint uh it was right after 9 11 uh holy terror and that's not holy terror it was called uh hang on let me find it it was when marvel was like kind of patriotic uh for a minute man of tomorrow not man of tomorrow man of tomorrow is good uh da -da 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 -da. marvel knights da -da -da. it was marvel knights captain america volume one basically i can't ref i'm blanking on the title but if you go through then all the way up to brew baker it's pretty fucking good uh pretty good and th then you know read the winter soldier stuff too even though it's not steve rogers it's really good it is at first the winter soldier stuff is really good by brew baker if not then go read that kirby that good old Kirby stuff. Cool, cool. Oh, you know, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mark Wade, when he was good, and Ron Garney did a great run at the end of the the, the 20th century, like right around 
1999, 2001. There's like a good 50 issue run. That's just pure Captain America. It's like when Mark Wade, I don't know, Mark Wade lost his mind. Dang. Oh. Uh, from LA, have you noticed that Rick and Morty and Breaking Bad are woke? It's very subtle, but just noticed it. I loved Breaking Bad. I didn't pick him on that at all, but I just remember the wife was a very cunty to him. I don't remember woke. I'll have to rewatch yeah. it. Captain America Marvel Knights Volume One. Very good. Um Rick and Morty's woke. Yeah. I've always thought it was woke. Uh Breaking Bad. I uh I don't really don't think so. I mean, it's made by liberal Hollywood, but I wouldn't call it woke at mm. all. No. Uh, thank you, Bradley Burnett, for becoming a member. I am seeking the way for 10. Oh, good. So am I. Gary and Chrissy, Merry Christmas to you both. A question for Gary. Do you think an indie company would license Wildstorm from DC for an accurate TV series? Oh, DC would have to get rid of it, which would mean getting rid of Jim Lee, which I'd be for. <laughs> but uh, I think where DC can succeed is they are willing to license their stuff out, which I think you're going to see a lot of companies start doing again. What does Jim Lee do? He is the, basically the, I think president of DC. He's supposed to be like the, uh, the head of DC comics and he doodles while other people make shitty comics. That's <laughs> He doesn't do anything. In other words, from Bradley Burnett. I just realized that there was an FNT member whose channel I hadn't joined. Sorry, Chrissy. Grievous error corrected. Aw. I thought he was going to say you. That'd be even more it. embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Is he uh, creative director? Is that what they're calling Jim Lee now? Creative director? Is that, oh, are they um, saying that in the chat? That's Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a good fake title. Like, Dust what? Man. It's sad how they have destroyed beloved characters. I am afraid just how bad Disney Plus will ruin Daredevil. Oh, I wouldn't even bother watching it. Like, if you want to preserve what is not even arguably the best superhero television show ever made, ever made is Daredevil. Like, even with the flawed season three, it's still like a thousand times better than anything Disney Plus has put out. If you want that preserved, do not watch Daredevil on Disney Plus. They've already ruined the Kingpin and they've already ruined the Daredevil. You already have your answer. And they don't, don't have the same people yeah. working on the show. So don't taint yourself. That's this is why I still haven't seen two girls, one cup. I'm just not seeing it. Uh, Mark, I it either. I <laughs> wow, good for us, Mark Wilkins. I honestly think a lot of these woke media companies have been getting government subsidies on the sly. That's what I think. How did Twitter make money before Elon Disney? They were not making money. They, were they weren't making money. And um, it's just come out recently. You know, we already knew this, but it's been confirmed that the comic book publishers were living off a of PPP loan. So if the comic book publishers were living off of PPP loans and the theaters were living off a of bailout and PPP loans, what do you think Hollywood was living off of? They absolutely were. Like, I know for a fact that a certain <sighs> academy was getting... Mm, a bunch of PPP loans. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And didn't necessarily need them. Z Highness, do you have the clip of Exit A Girl eating a banana? Uh, I don't, but I would love to see that one day. Uh, Christian Wolf, for two, you guys hear about Elon's kid getting accosted? No. Uh oh. I hope not. not shocking, though. I hope he's well protected. Uh, America 76. Oh, for 1776. Thank you. Uh, 20 year olds amenable to government fascism. Mao's little red book revolution was a bunch of 20 year olds purifying China of its olds. Dictator Barack Okami learned well. Yep. Wow. And that that's kind of what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Damn. Damn. Okay. Bradley Burnett, with the amount of gaslighting that President Pudding, KGP, and the rest of Biden Harris admin does on a daily basis, I can't believe they are against fracking. They need all the natural gas they can get. Mm -hmm. Good point. Huge ass. Gay Yule belongs in J Yule. Wow. Gay Yule. Oh, what? What? <laughs> Okay, this might be over my head. 
I do think it's funny, though, even though I don't understand it. Well, Mark Wilkins, how about YouTube canceling that sick child who's dying wish was to reach 100K subs? Krigler and Nina were talking about it. Yes, this was uh, Crack in the Box. Uh, YouTube banned a terminally ill child who's, I don't know if it was a make-a-wish or just a dying wish was to hit 100K subs. And then he posted a video of Johnny Depp just giving him a shout-out. And I think the Amber Heard fans came after it could be that or what jeremy from the quartering said it could be considered spam because like you know like if we'll shout somebody out on fnt and uh to get them up to a thousand subs they'll get over like a thousand then it'll disappear and then it'll come back because they have to verify them when it hits a hundred thousand in days that being said and i brought this up remember that biatch who did the van video and all of a sudden had like a million subs and and she was getting boosted by completely naturally by uh youtube uh they didn't take her channel away they didn't take Mm. her woman of color completely naturally in a van like totally just everything about it was just purely authentic i'm sure uh so i call bullshit on that and yeah i don't know what it is youtube needs to fix it. it's the worst look and like it's gonna get out It's going to get out. I hope Johnny Depp says something. This kid is probably traumatized right now. And you don't need a kid who's had two, I I believe, two heart transplants and one of them's not taking and they don't have long for the world. Traumatized. And some fuckwit allowed YouTube. I even like, I've lit up my partner manager on this. I'm like, this is an outrage. I sound like an old man. (laughs) All caps. Yeah, it is uh, though. It's a fucking outrage. So hopefully they fix it by tomorrow. Uh, if not, then, uh, look for a lot of videos to be made, including mm-hmm. for me. I will make one. I will be, like, how do they not know? Like how many terminally ill kids are on YouTube? <laughs> like, I think it's easy it's to keep track like of one of the saddest things. It's horrible. Right? Uh, and listen, I, I, I hope against hope. I, I, I don't even want to bring this up, but like, we don't know. I, I figured Johnny making a video kind of legitimized the kid. You always got to wonder. Okay. Cause like, there's always weird parents out there and shit, but, uh, it seemed very legit to me and uh, all the videos were adorable and the poor kid, you know, just make them happy. It's, you know, it's Christmas time. Yeah. And eh, what fucking YouTube. Fucking YouTube. Somebody, maybe, sure. maybe tell Elon. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe Elon. he's got Susan on the hotline. Yeah. Elon reach across the aisle. Uh, Retro Meister, my hero academia respects more about superhero comic book culture compared to Marvel and DC combined. And Netflix knows that, which is why they want to control and gatekeep anime and video game IPs. I, I think Netflix wants to control and gatekeep them. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I just don't think they can because they're not Japan. Uh, and like, you know, anytime Americans try to do something like once in a while, like The Last Airbender, I like that show. That was really good. You know, that was like an American version, but it's still an American version of of anime right like we 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 just don't get it culturally uh but we love it a lot of people love it so uh why don't you just let the japanese make it that would be my and and yeah live action adaptations don't even work in japan okay (laughs) what makes you think they're gonna work here (laughs) from luke homan uh gary do you did you ever go to tuesday chip when you worked at san rafael tesla any regular meetings in the city thanks I went to the, uh, I did go to Tuesday chip, uh, a couple times, but my regular meeting in the city was a place that's still there. I highly recommend it called the gratitude center on, uh, on seventh and Irving. Uh, great, great place. Great recovery. That's the place that got me sober again. After I relapsed that there wasn't a rehab or anything. I was wow. that place. Uh, they have meetings all day long. They have a great, uh, had a great speaker meeting on Monday. I used to volunteer there on Christmas Eve, Christmas day and new year's day all the time I, I miss it uh that's the one thing i miss in san francisco is the gratitude center do you find a new place to go in texas like in case you feel like going? Still looking. i've i've i think i found a place where actually where my my kid goes to school oh <laughs> so, yeah. yeah yeah that's pretty cool that is pretty cool ginger adventure unless gary has to listen to gaming news lol hope to see the witcher 3 gameplay that will be on the 22nd Ooh. Okay. I've got some videos to work on before then, but 20 seconds. Sahil, Gary, who's the goat? Toby, Reeve, RDJ, or Jackman? 
Reeve. This is a Spider-Man question. Well, it's a superhero question. Like, who's the best oh. <laughs> playing at the... Like, all four of those were the best at playing their respective superheroes. Jackman, Wolverine, RDJ, Iron Man, Toby, Spider-Man. But Reeve is the goat. End of Wow. Story. Cool, cool. Uh, Thunderstorm. Hi, everybody. It just helped a lady out who ran out of gas with some coin was going to offer her a ride, but she disappeared and couldn't find her. Oh, no. Night. Oh, wow. Well, she was a ghost. <laughs> That's pretty great. I can't believe you would. I've never driven till I was actually out of gas. But maybe don't look at it. Uh, Albert, not a retro. To clarify, I'm looking forward to Anna's disappointment because anybody who thinks what Zeus did to Thor in Love and Thunder was funny is a garbage person. The flick was a sexual assault and not funny. Wow. Maybe yeah, I mean, like, can we do that to girls? Can we just, can we flick too hard? I mean, I'm just, I'm looking for balance. That's all I'm you looking can. for. can, yeah. Okay, Paul Anderson, if you get Michael Malice on, get Blair White at the same time, just for ass. <laughs> that talk. would be, that would go crazy yeah. viral. Ancient Mariner, thanks for becoming a member. Deranged Lunatic, working at FNT and you don't even have to be vaxxed. Oh, no. true. No, you don't. Uh, Iris, love you guys. Great guests. I think would be strong internet conservatives like Insta pundit or ace of spades. Yeah, Gary, who's on your like to do list? Do you have any like who's on who's on your Christmas wish list of guests? Oh boy, I take it such a one day at a time approach. Um, Adrian Curry, want her on big time, but and we keep talking, but uh, because she's super based and knows her shit. So that's kind of like my number one right now. If you're out there listening, okay. Adrian, hi. Number one. Uh, she's brilliant. I like her. Uh, and Crowder, we almost had on, but we're going to have on again. So I definitely want to have Crowder. Um, I know there is. I'd like to get Jeremy Johns on. And somebody brought up, uh, I'd like to get Red Letter Media on too. Oh. Rich. I'd like to get Rich on. I doubt they'd ever come on. But uh, who knows? That's that's who I'd like to get on. Uh, I'm not like, a, I, I I want to keep it in the realm of like YouTube and content creators. Uh, the only movie star uh, like Matthew Marsden would be welcome. Oh, Gina's yeah. welcome. We got to get Matthew on sometime. Uh, but Gina's always welcome. But like the rest of Hollywood can piss off, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, can suck it. Yeah. Uh, Otto Rommel. Love you both on FNT. Frost guest visits were epic. Gary Bacchanal or Belly Up, Mojo Nixon or Beat Farmers. Oh God, you're making me choose. Okay, those are bars. Those are like venues in San Diego. And uh, Belly Up, I got to go with Belly Up Tavern as my favorite. Oh, Beat Farmers, May Country Dick Montana, rest in peace. I love Mojo. Mojo, those are San Diego bands. So, I grew oh up. wow. Uh, but Country Dick Montana was an icon. Died way too early. Died in Canada. Uh, but he's, you know, he's saying the classic song, happy boy, look it up on the internet is he was a San Diego legend, San Diego legend. Wow. Cool. Cool. Oh, from in hot water. Can you have Bill Schultz on Friday night? <laughs> I got Bill Schultz on. <laughs> you know who Bill Schultz is? Okay, cool. Yeah. I used to watch red eye when he was on it. Oh, great. Oh, he would be fun. He's a fun yeah. guy. I, never mind. I was going to say, so I always thought <laughs> E-Rock would be awesome too. Cause he's a huge nerd. Uh, yeah compound media um i guess manager office manager demon microwave chrissy mayor should play jennifer lawrence teaching the navi pregnant kung fu <laughs> <laughs> that's fun oh uh, preg fu how would preg you do fu? Preg fu? Uh, preg it could fu. be like a combination of breathing exercises yoga and kung fu mm-hmm there you go. <laughs> Julio Scissors just popped in to throw you a few bucks. Bye. Oh, thanks, Julio. Latinx. Dontarius. Oh, my God. <laughs> Five. Gary, have you seen a movie from the 80s called Suburbia? They don't make yes. them like that anymore. Absolutely. I've watched it uh, a, a lot. It was like one of the only punk rock movies there was. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Push ups. Gary, come to New York sometime. Oh, yeah. You could come to Compound Media. Uh, Johnny Slactic uh, Slackchin, been psyched for this live stream all day. Uh, hope Cheers. 
feel excited now that you're watching it. Solid monkey. Having Gary on was a good idea. I can't wait to see where Cavill lands. Keep up the funny hail sunshine. Hail. Oh. That is, yeah. That was, that was super disappointing news. I, I don't get that bummed out about stuff anymore because it's just not a surprise, but that was a bummer. I'm going to, I'll be real. I'm a little you're bummed. Gonna, about that. You're going to have to go do a video. Uh, yeah. the Iron Omega. Now Henry has time to play as in Warhammer 40k. <laughs> he has lots of time. Henry's gonna be fine. He'll land on his feet. He'll find some franchise. Maybe the Highlander remake will be cool. Maybe um, yeah, maybe he gets into something 40k because like uh, 40k, you can't do it now because it's really masculine and crazy. Lots of lore. What I know of it. And I honestly, it's not much, but uh, it's what my friends told me. But it sounds like uh, it would be crack to me. That's why I stay away from it. It's like, I've got <laughs> enough crack. I don't need extra crack. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wes Britannicus. Good evening, guys. Gary, I told Eric July not to make an in-universe Nof Norfrica album. It would make way too much money. Don't you agree? Uh, totally. <laughs> What's a Norfrica? I have no idea. <laughs> North Africa? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to know and I don't know. I'm Ancient sorry. Mariner. Chrissy, meeting you was great. You're funny and a true comedian. Gary, flex your muscles and get Henry Cavill on FNT. I'd get Henry on FNT. I'd, that, that'd be a, a, a one actor, I'd sure. I'm Ooh. sure he'd just rush right to it and not get any clap back for it at all for talking to a bunch of alt rohirrims alt rohirrims Henry, if you're listening, hit, hit him up. Albert, Henry Cavill dated Gina Carano. Coincidence? Did they date? But yes, they did. The world wasn't rumor. ready for it. The world mm -hmm. wasn't ready for it. Yeah. Uh, Dustman, how about Henry Cavill as Captain Britain? That'd be good if it was like if this was 2012 and uh, Marvel was making uh, Captain Britain. Absolutely. Yep. Just two years, 10 years too late. 10 years too late. JS Pena, it's Hispanic, not Latinx. I okay. agree. Hispanic, Latino. Bradley Bru Burnett, it's clear any aspect of the Snyderverse is dead. I imagine that a particular Snyderverse fan may have some interesting FNT Super Chats this week. Yeah, Mikey Gussler, uh, I will, I've, I'm, I am with him on his rage. I will be with him. I will be with him. I was, I'm willing, I was willing to give James Gunn the benefit of the doubt. It's very hard now. It's very hard. And like, I know what kind of Superman they're going to pick. It's going to be a lot more like the one from Superman and Lois, which was fine for a dumb CW TV show, but it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a little wafier, not anemic. We don't a barista threatening Superman. Okay. So it can only be so masculine and think about how sexist that is like masculinity is. is like this thing we're born with and we have no fucking power over. So it's like the, the very definition of, of bigotry that's going on in misandry. It is. We're not supposed to judge women by their big, fat, nasty bodies, but we do judge men by their bodies. What happened to born this way? That includes masculinity. Yeah. Uh, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. They give consoles in prison now. Oh, is that like counseling? They do. Yeah. No, they give computers too. I can't even oh, like get my wow. head around that. It's like you Why let you leave. Why would you leave? You know, I mean, prison's a shitty experience. Don't get me wrong. Like we had TVs. It still sucked. Uh, Cause it, I, and actually the, like the, the computer can act as something that's even worse. Right. Because you've got your window to the real world, you know? Mm. So you yeah. see, uh, you, you see all, all these like hot women on the news and only fans. You're like, ah, oh, they're out there. It'd be so much like it'd be terrible if you had access to porn. It would be awful. Or would there be less fights if they had porn in prison? No, there'd be more. Ah, uh, okay. Be yeah. Uh, Chris Saigon, Terrigan, thank you for that. Dala, Mark Smidov, Latino in C yard, black in D yard, race fight daily. Every I day. I, I think I know why the. They were in the D yard. They, you know, like they wouldn't separate them on yards unless there was a straight up race riot. And then for a while, it, each race would be let out for a little while for yard time. 
Wow. You think about that, like that that's crazy, but it's it's the way it was. Yeah. The way it was. And each one had their own shot collar or tank captain who kind of made, you know. Yeah. And th that's what kept the peace. What a bright time. It's the white time. <laughs> hey. hey. Austin Kaiser, when are you inviting Deadwood Dale onto FNT? I don't know who that is. Uh, soon. Soon, good. Jay Forte, Gary, you should have had Revenge of the Sis on. Oh yeah, they're pretty based. They have a couple of based boys. They were just on Compound Media. Um, Caleb Dixon, hey Gary, what do you think of the Blackest Night storyline? Uh, I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun for what it was. Like DC was always better at, I liked it more than I liked Flashpoint. I know a lot of people like Flashpoint. I wasn't big on it. Okay. So D DC had like, it was interesting. It had like some good sprawling stories like Blackest Night and uh, Flashpoint. But then it had some shit like New 52. Uh, yeah, it was like DC was always trailing behind Marvel instead of just being themselves. Wow. Uh, which was uh, frustrating. So I know some people like Dan Didio, the former guy who's gone. I wasn't a big fan of him, uh, but he's certainly better than what they have now. Uh, from Angel Fire. Hi, Christine Gary. Do you see Amazon Video ordered a God of War series? If Conan was canceled for being too masculine, how will this go through? I guess they want to ruin another beloved series. Yeah, I, I, I think they're... Uh, mentality is we're just going to throw, we're just going to buy shit and try to, and I talked about it on my live stream today that they cannot make a better God of war than the game. Like that, that's why game adaptation is something you probably would shouldn't even mess with. Right. Uh, unless it's fucking telltale or something, I, which is all adaptions anyway, but like you're already playing the best version. You have control of the story. The story is better. The characters are better. Everything's better. So you're just going to see a not as good version of your game that you have no control over that Hollywood will just want, feel the need to change. Even if the game has changed enough stuff, you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, God of war, just play the game. Cause that's the, that's the best version. Okay. That's the best version. Which I mean, it's almost like at this point, which franchise are left untainted or untouched or unruined. Uh, Stargate, uh, Babylon five, but these, these are like, we are getting in the weeds, Farscape, uh, as far as sci-fi franchises, these are like really niche, uh, shows that they haven't fucked with as far as big ones go they're They're, they're all, they've all gone. Like Lord of the Rings was like kind of last one, like okay. last of the big ones. Um, yeah, are you missing not having to watch any more uh, Rings of Power? <laughs> yeah, I'm like ripe for it. I'm watching the making of, oh, uh, to work on my next video that we briefly discussed prior to the live stream. That I hopefully will have some new information for you of like why it was such a disaster, aside from the obvious, of course. But, uh, yeah, that's my next video. Did you see the article that, uh, for season two, Chrissy? They, no. they they've they've solved the problem they're gonna fix everything oh. did you know what they you know what their big solution was oh god let's see um the directors yes they hired all female directors oh god i literally i just googled it very quickly and i i didn't really know that i just wow all female directors that is gay that's it it's it saying all better now, now. Uh, when does the next season come out uh, like hopefully 2025 so it's like a long way off okay we'll all be dead by then oh. uh this is for the doberman gary what do you think about adam warlock in gotg3 one of my favorite all-time characters and too late like he was directly connected with the infinity gauntlet and and Ooh. thanos most most notably thanos like that's where he uh that's where thanos uh, I call him Thanos. Uh, that's where he became most prominent with Warlock books. I mean, I, I don't like Will Pol Poulter is fine. I think he's a good actor and I think he'd probably play the character. I just think it's too little too late. Uh, that being said, I think Guardians probably will end up being the last 
decent Marvel movie because the script was written like three years ago. If if it has a chance at all, it might suck. The trailer you know, but, looks great. Uh, like as much as I liked the Suicide Squad, and I did, I didn't like Peacemaker, um, which is a ga- James Gunn thing. I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not sold on James Gunn at DC. I thought uh, again, the Suicide Squad was fun, and it was in his wheelhouse. But now you have a guy who's quirky in charge of like very traditional characters, and I don't know if he's the right guy. I'm not sold on it at all. Uh, I would have been more sold on it if he would have kept Henry. Uh, yeah. That's so sad. Best Superman comic has seen them come. Yes, I have it here. I will read it. Don't worry. Uh, Zach told, did either of you watch Barbarian this year? And if so, thoughts? It was directed by one of the guys from WKUK. And no, not the dead one. What's WK keeping up with it? No. Kardashians. WKUK. Which What is that? I don't know what WKUK is. I, I've heard about Barbarians pretty good, though, as far as a horror movie goes. Okay. I'll check uh, it out. Gary praised Primal in passing on F&T since it's great and definitely not woke, even though from Warner, ever consider making a video about it. I would. Uh, try to oh, cost- Whitest Kids You Know is WKUK. All right. Oh, the Whitest Kids video. You Know. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. I did not know that. I did not know that. Uh I yes, I would. I'm gonna have some probably like there's gonna be a uh, a little a uh, couple months there where I don't think a- anything I really cover is coming out except like like every time I think that and G4 shuts down or Frost does something or Bob one of the Bobs gets fired. So there's always something, but uh, I, I want to do a Daredevil video like badly, like that's kind of my comfort food i want to re-watch daredevil and do a video and i and perry's been chomping at the bit to do it uh and uh that but after that i would do a primal one for sure it would probably be daredevil venture brothers primal Ooh. and this would be like recommends like these venture are- brothers sounds like a, a show where they flip houses uh no no uh, but it's a great show. It's a parody of Saturday morning cartoons from oh. our, our, but it's, wow. it's some of the f- wittiest, cleverest, funniest shit you've ever, but it's for it, like, you have to like, at least have watched Scooby-Doo oh, or yeah. Johnny quest or some of those more Saturday morning cartoons from, you know, older folks like me. Uh, but seriously, one of the best shows ever written and it's animated, but it's like, damn, there, <laughs> there's stuff you can't do. There's a, like one of the, there's a guy named Brock and uh, there's a whole debate about tits. It's like one of the best clips. If you want to just like go on Venture Brothers debate about tits and it's fucking <laughs> that for or against fucking well it's actually just insults for tits so they start <laughs> talking about tits and then they go into insults for tits and it's hilarious it's so fucking hilarious it's just bags of fat uh what's up french porch french porch from porch chrissy and gary thanks for everything both of you do gary if you could cast one actor or actress in a superhero role who would it be other than henry cavill and superman i know right oh that's a good question there's so many that have taken up the like it would have to be somebody who hasn't been uh, who hasn't been in a superhero movie who's a big actor i like i'm a i'm a fan of i know he was terrible in boba fett but i'm a timothy oliphant fan I, I think he's he was guy. so great in go oh brilliant in go i think he would be a great johnny blaze i think he'd be a great johnny blaze timothy oliphant yeah he embodies just like early aughts coolness especially yep. in go is great but it's like being going back in time um, all right, a couple more. Albert Retro flicking anybody for comedic fodder is wrong. If done to Valkyrie, it would have hit, I would have been handled in a darker and creepier way, not for laughs. Have a good night. We should you, be able to flick our females, right? Not? And honestly, you could have done it in a dark and creepy way. Like they made the gods look like fools, and instead, you make the gods look like gods, like they're on another level. We don't necessarily understand. They can be petty and cruel, and uh, it just doesn't matter to them. That that's that would be way more in line with mythology. 
Yeah. You could have done it in a really scary, dark, creepy way. Uh, but like, they don't want to make uh, Emily Blunt as a, uh, yeah, Emily Blunt as the invisible woman would be. Perfect. Ooh, Ooh, I love Emily Blunt. Perfect. She's, she, I like her too. She's badass. Yep. Mew, Mew. Did you hear about Henry Cavill getting the boot bite? Oh, yes, we did. What the fuck, man? This is for. I haven't even looked at Twitter. Is Twitter like losing its fucking mind about Retaliate this? show for leaving? Which are, uh, let's see. Yes, I'm sure it is. But I have not looked at that. Yeah, Superman is either. trending with The Witcher and James <laughs> yep. Gunn. Wow. Uh, I feel legitimately terrible for Henry Cavill. The dude leaves The Witcher after they butcher the source material. DC tells him he's finally back after years to come back. Uh, then gets a few months later, just awful. That's Ryan. That's my boy, Ryan. I'm going to retweet him, by the way. Cool. Uh, James Gunn just lost, like, all that goodwill's gone, baby. Uh, yeah. Terrible, terrible. Awful. Cassius Cleo, somebody didn't finish all of ESOM. I did not yet. No, it's still in my eyes. I, my... I, right. I said that. <laughs> I know. No, I, of course. I, I, I owe him a video. So when I, I'm going to try to get that up by the end of the year, my review of ISOM on Nerdrotic Daily. Nicholas Cage is a new Superman. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Space Dave, how big will the celebration be when you hit 100K subs? Um, Gary, you hit it already. You're like, oh, what, they're talking three. to you. Me? Oh, God. Yeah, it'll be pretty cray. Well, how close? Where, where are you at right now? I'm at like 72, I think. We're getting there. Yeah, slow and steady, like when baby. When we started this little journey, it was not that. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is just inside of uh, two years, really. Like two, two and a half years. That's so. pretty impressive because it took I, me. What four to get to a hundred? I had. I'm thrilled. I'm happy to just like not have to like have a day job. That's all I wanted was to leave that that creepy old. Rich I dude. remember when we talked about that. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm I'm glad. I'm really happy for you. By the way, really oh, proud of you too. You're doing really thanks. good. Yeah, yeah. They pushed me out of the nest with the uh with the old jab. I was like, all right, I guess this is it. Fly be free, bird. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Prime Gaming. Love you both. Hail FNT and Simcast. Long live the fellowship. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Surly SOB for 20. I forgot all about Happy Boy. My dad used to sing it back in the 80s. Rest in peace, Pop. Oh, oh. rest in peace, Pops. Hopefully her dad and my mom are fucking around in heaven doing some gross stuff. Boner. <laughs> Why would I say that? Boner and sweatpants. <laughs> Please get Dave Lando back on FNT. No offense, but the episode of FNT in which he was on was probably the worst FNT of all time. Need a redo, please. What? Okay. That. that was my fault. Because I had COVID. Oh. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I, I was just, I couldn't steer the ship. I tried but I was just like getting worse as the show oh. went on. Right. And uh, I started kind of fine, but like by the time the show was over, I passed out for like a, an entire day. I was fine. By the way, didn't die because it had a 99.9% .9 uh, uh, recovery rate. Yeah. And I was fine by the time we were going home, but it's no big uh, deal. If Frank just had it again and I was like sleeping next to him every night, breathing in his air, I feel great. I feel fine. I guess we know whose antibodies are stronger. Right. Uh, Retro Meister. No, we won't get Dave Landau back. And we almost did. We will. Because Dave's a Dave's a nerd. Dave's a big time nerd. Yes. Dave is hilarious. Uh, to Gary's answer, I mean that the SGWs at Netflix and Amazon want to reduce the value of things most people enjoy, like anime and video games, into their activist projects by taking away its escapism. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is all, I mean, like, this is where... Whether Hollywood is aware of it, I, I, whether the, the 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 people in the board at Disney or Netflix are aware of it, some are, and the ones who are aware of it are their DEI officers, the 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 infiltrators into our culture who are trying to separate us, divide us, and and the end game for them, if they destroy it, good, even better, they either change it to what they feel it needs to be because they know better than you and they are the good guys and we are the bad guys and this is a white supremacist society or it just falls apart. Either way, they win. So that's what we're fighting. We're fighting destroyers. We're people yeah. who want to preserve and build. And of course, we want to evolve. Uh, we're not trying to preserve any like 50s ideals. We don't, you know, other than Ryan, 
<laughs> and, and you know, uh, we don't, we don't uh, like want all the women unless they want to be there. If they want to be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen, that's their choice. That's not easy, by the way. Yeah, uh, you could be barefoot, pregnant, and fighting, or fighting and in an army, fighting in a war. Yeah, uh, and that that will be a reality someday if we keep going the way we're going. But uh, I digress. Uh, that it, it, it is cultural Marxism. That's mm-hmm. what it is. And I'm, 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 you know, at first I was like caught, I, like, do I want to say that? That might sound crazy. And then I had tons and years of evidence. Uh, so I have no problem saying it now at all. Cause it, it's a fact. And then when people in Hollywood going, yeah, you know, and yeah, we know it was always there, but, um, you know, there's still a lot of people in Hollywood who just want to create art you know, and, and, and whatever their politics are, their, their main goal is like, I'm not here to teach you. I'm not here to preach to you. I just want to create art. That's what we need to support wherever yeah. they come from. Yes. Sound wave, all hail. Love you, Chrissy. Gary, you are the goat of the nerd culture. Not sure if you ever answered this. But what do you think of the original Spawn movie? It's terrible and I love it. It's got one of the best soundtracks. Uh, I'd say the Crow soundtrack is slightly better. But, uh, you know, Marilyn Manson and the Sneaker Pimps, that song is uh, Long Road Back to Hell. It is a fucking good song. So, yeah, like, that that was a really good soundtrack. It's a silly movie that I liked. Okay, cool. Uh, Adam Riley, Daredevil content. Oh, yeah, you were just uh, talking about this. Should reach out to Rager Fist. Rager. Razor Fist, he got me back into the man without fear after years away from it. Oh, I would, I would, uh, I would definitely consult with Razor Fist over the the series if he wanted to be a part of it. Absolutely. Uh, Chrissy, have you seen Daredevil? If not, it's a great show. I think was there a Daredevil movie? There's a movie with Ben Affleck. Okay, I think that I saw. Uh, it's not good. The director's cut's better, but it's still like a better not good. Um, and then there's a TV show that was on Netflix, which is not only the best superhero show; it's one of the best TV shows ever made. Wow. Like it is, it is, it goes there. It's a hard R superhero show. Wow. You had me at hard R. Hard R. Um, it's, based, it's disappointing to not have Henry Cavill, but I would like to see a Superman with powers limited to the original conception of the character. Yes. Okay. A couple more. Matthew Hammond, the Sunday show is great, Gary. Maybe Jack Vasobia could come on one Sunday. He has been talking about Graham. Oh, do I have his number? Like Graham Hancock would have to like I would him and Randall will be a completely separate show. That's like not FNT material. That's like one on one. Uh Jack Posobic, I think he's gotten he's gotten nerd crazy. He used to do Game of Thrones videos. He used to do Game of Thrones stuff. So yeah, we de- definitely have Jack on. Okay, yeah. He wants right, to I'm slum it. I'm with, not you, Chrissy, but with me on the list. <laughs> I met him at a at uh I think at a rally in DC in like November of twenty twenty. And then at that Minds event that I hosted, I think uh, I'll have to check if I have his email. The Woke Breaker. Hell chat. Ever think about having Jericho Green on FNT? Love FNT. Keep up the great work. Hashtag Rip Reverse. Um, I'm going to blow through these. Christian Wolf. Elon is sharing video and the license plate of the guy who went after his kid. This should be interesting. Yeah, nobody should be doxing anybody's location. Certainly not him. That's really not okay. He went after his kid, though. Like, if it's the guy who goes after his kid, if you go after my kid, all bets are off. I don't give a fuck who you are or what you do. Yeah, that's not, oh, censorship. Like, no, that's, he has to be very careful. Uh, He does. I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. Unexpected fire. Henry Cavill out of Superman. Women most affected. Yes. Blaze Hart. Thank you. Samurai. If DC reboots into something amazing with a halfway decent soups under gun and Cavill becomes the best James Bond, this could be a win. Yeah. If, if Cavill becomes James Bond, then yeah, I would call that a win because that's that's a part he could play even longer. And I think he I think he'd be a legit Bond. If they made it uh you know, like Bond, I, I'd say maybe even lean back into the you know Pierce Brosnan. Ooh. Was, I love Pierce was great. I he is a fox, a silver fox. Um, Scott Fisher, Jennifer Lawrence, Superman, book it. 
Yes. Oh, God, probably. Sheldon Misservi. Have some of my Canadian dollars. Well, they have some more. Well, they have some worth. Common at you from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Oh, it sounds cold up there. Thank you, Jesus. Scott Fisher. Gary, Brett Cooper would be good on FNT. Brett Cooper. Oh, Brett Cooper. Oh, that was the name I was trying to. I, I, I said I can hear as being triggered from here by mis, me. I mispronounced Pierce. It's Bron. Sin. Oh, <laughs> what you I say? Always, I always, I, I was, I said it wrong forever and just never corrected, but it like triggered as so much of it was coming. <laughs> uh, Brick Cooper, I saw Jeremy from the quartering go on quite the drunk text tirade about her. I bet <laughs> so he's a funny. secret simp. I <laughs> love drunk quartering. Like that, that should be his own separate channel. Like he should it make should a new be. YouTube channel called Drunk Quartering. Um, because, uh, while I wouldn't, yeah, female Shapiro, I wouldn't recommend it. It is entertaining as hell. I love Jeremy from the quartering. He's great. It's a little tipsy on the Twitter and, uh, it's fire. (laughs) It's so so fun. (laughs) Master Austin Christopher Reeve is the goat, but Dean Kane was my Superman growing Uh, up. Dean Kane's awesome. We'd have him on Friday night tights too. He's based and he was, uh, I loved, uh, Dean Kane as Superman. Yeah, also a fox. Uh, Rhapsody, no Frica, the metal band from Isom Hill. Okay. Isom, number you one should, Hill. You should make a, yes, I agree. Okay. Jimmy James, how long before SGW Hollywood tries to remake Barfly and Dead Alive for a modern audience? Hope to see the drinker someday review both for a hammered audience. Cheers to you both. Um, Kylo Harrison, did Gary watch the sci fi show Farscape? I was a late comer to it, it was already gone by the time I started watching it. And uh, I did a couple reviews on the channel, kind of like Virgin watching it, and then it freaking ripped through it. It was great, and it's now like one of my all time favorite shows. Oh, oh, Brittany Venti, what's up? Thanks, Venti. The what's up, Brittany? what's up, Venti? Surly SOB, how long before Hollywood tries to remake something like Porky's? Oh my god, they how could they even try? They they can't touch Porky's. That's like it would have to be a completely different movie, yeah. It'd have to be like they're canceling all the guys, like, they <laughs> yeah, stuff, and then it's like court drama of them getting canceled. And me too, <laughs> they couldn't have a single scene. Uh, no, well, like, remember the scene where the guy was like doing the girl in the gym and he stuck yep. it's so loud he stuck freaking dirty socks in her mouth oh my god <laughs> yeah every scene was so wrong but it was so funny yeah. hell chrissy and gary it's disturbing that the powers that be are trying to get us all to have a requiem for a dream ending irl eek he can do who okay you saw requiem for the dream who had the best com- who had the best outcome at the end of that movie i don't think god have i seen it okay there was the guy who went to prison there was the guy who lost his arm. Uh, there was the uh, ass to ass, and then the and then the mom that went to the old folks' home with dementia or something like that. Oh. It's been a while since I've seen it. Okay, I guess the mom then. Oh, I think it's definitely the guy who went to prison, like because he can get <laughs> out and he's gonna be okay. Uh, maybe the guy who lost his arm—that was Jared Leto, right? Was that Jared Leto? I gotta rewatch that. Uh, Jennifer Connelly did not end up the best in that one in that situation. No. Soundwave. Also on FNT, would you ever have the angry video game nerd or cinema scare on? Pretty sure I spelled that wrong. Cinema Sacra. I don't know who that is. Um, Schwaschelbach. Oh my God. Thanks, Jay Schwaschelbach. Merry effing Christmas. Love you both. Chrissy, be in Vega next year. Hail FNT. I think you mean Vegas. Thank you, Jay Schwaschelbach. Okay, yeah. We named a bear after Jay Swashelbach. It's the first content. Jay Schwalbach. What's Schwalbach. up? King Chorus. Gary survived the 80s. The vid didn't stand a chance. All right. A couple more. Oscar the Gooch. Hey, Gary. Next time you visit Arizona, bring Chrissy and Az. I will, I've will. i never been to Arizona. I'm dying to go. Doug what? Stanhope lives in Arizona. How could uh, you have never been to Arizona? I've been, to, I've been to Vegas 45 million times, but never Arizona. You're like right there. Arizona's great. Uh, they have a little trouble counting their votes, but uh, <laughs> yes, why, they do. Uh, it's really a base state that's been uh, invaded by California. F- fuck, I'm sorry. I just want to apologize to every Arizona. And you know what? We used to give you guys shit back in the 80s. You'd come to our beaches and we call you zoners. 
Wow. Look at our beaches, bro. Like now I the tables have turned. Uh, but now the tables have turned, and I'm sorry. I just apologize to all Arizona. Thinking rocked. How did That's FMT awesome. change Gary when Chrissy showed up? Uh oh, maybe don't answer this question. Stargate rocks the nineties. J Law rocked. Final crisis. Oh, uh, uh, I thought <laughs> we leveled up. No, it's like each person we've added has leveled the show up uh and they bring something different as brought like insanity like absolute insanity uh and you know as is like like our curly right <laughs> and i mean that in the best way like like he's our curly he's our costello uh and then chrissy came in and she is like hmm i'm thinking early saturday night live oh wow back when it was good back when it was great. good Gilda Radner. She's our Gilda. Oh, Radner. she's so funny. Uh, so yeah, like I think each person brought something different and leveled it up. And uh and you know, it it's it's amazing that it works because <laughs> it is crazy. It is <laughs> so. crazy. And I've noticed we, well, we've been having more disparu and more um shad, and they both have very specialized um nerd areas. That they can speak they're to. uh what we try to do is divide and conquer with the autism and then you bring <laughs> some normal stuff uh you know oh i mean that in a, the most loving way by the way so yeah that's and that. i hope he's not upset that i that this dis brew that i called his ha haircut lesbian i mean that in the best way possible uh philip vecchio henry cavill needs to be in a milius film J.S. Pena. Get Kenzie Taylor from Captain Marvel prawn parody. Oh, I know Kenzie. Kenzie's, um, uh, she was sober. She just uh, celebrated a sober birthday. So A lot of these prawn stars are based. Uh, they just somehow yeah, more yeah. out about it than others. Austin Kaiser, Chrissy Deadwood, Dale created a hilarious music video roasting FNT in their largest whale, George. It's one of the funniest YouTube videos ever made. Have you seen this? Well, yeah, like I have, I've seen it. Okay. All right, cool. And Joseph Hen Henson. Joseph. Wow, I can't read. By the oh, way, Deadwood Dale like didn't ever uh, meant that as a roast. By the way, didn't no. mean it as a roast. No, he was just like just making fun, like oh. it, it was, like roast in the sense of like fuck these guys. It was just kind of done and fun. Okay, okay. According so to Deadwood Dale, <laughs> to to Ryan Kinnell. So uh, yeah. So no hard feelings. No, okay. not, not dude. I th there aren't even hard feelings from people who like uh have for me from, uh, who have been absolutely shitty. I have none. I, I just don't care. Yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. move on, you know. That's how I get too. I get hard neutral on people. I'm just like, yeah, like it's gonna waste energy and time being like mad. No, that's my recovery approach. It, it's really cold blooded, but um like yeah. early on in recovery, I had some friends who wanted to pull me back in and I loved them dearly. They were like family. We ride or die with these people. And when I got out, it was like, mm, no, I can't. I can't. If you're sober. You want to go to meetings? I can. But uh, I can't otherwise. And uh, that's how I learned to edit my life. You you surround yourself with good people who not are not necessarily about me all the time, but like have my best interests at heart wouldn't uh backstab me or betray me and the uh, betray trust uh that's you have to thing. you have to really like parent yourself like there has to be a real clear like mom dad voice uh that you have to give yourself every day um jared little was the lost arm in requiem yeah thank you okay we got through them all oh my god gary thank you so much for coming on this easily could be five hours. And if you know what, if you want that, tune into FNT Fridays at 4 30 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. Because there's Carrie so Smith. This yes, Friday. Carrie Smith will be on. I love Carrie. Um, Gary, what are you working on? What's coming up? Where can people follow you? Uh working on two videos. There's I might do an avatar review that will be super quick, but I'm working on two big videos for the end of the year. Uh and uh, that's pretty much taken up all my time. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter a lot lately and on YouTube at Neurotic. Chrissy, thank you for having me on. And uh, yeah, we have the 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 ray of sunshine uh, who is almost too good for this world, Carrie Smith mm -hmm. on Friday Night Tights, who I love dearly. She is a great person. Uh, so yeah, please tune in and uh, 
look forward to seeing you there, Chrissy. And one more from Josh Cruz. G. Warner Brothers is done. They're not building shit. I'm not watching any of it. Yep, they just... A lot of people have checked out. A lot of people are done watching. Um, a lot of stuff. I think people. a lot of people are done with Hollywood. And man, DC just made a huge mistake tonight. It's mm-hmm. risky. It's got to admit, it's risky. I smell a new Gary video. Uh, thank you so much to the chat for your comments and questions. Thank you, Gary, for spending so much time. Uh, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Bye.